Well, guys, today we got Bruce Wilson and Paul Coates. Coates, Coates, how do I do this? I, I always so do this. when I say it, it's Coates, but I'm from the north of England, so it doesn't come across like an American would say it. Bruce can say it. Coates. Coats like your coat, like red coat coats. Wear, so it's like go. with an E in, but in between the T and the S. So. Yeah. Red coats. Yeah. Yeah, call me go. what you want. It's okay. <laughs> we'll just call you Paul because yeah. it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Paul. You know, we got uh, Bruce and Paul. I've known Bruce for freaking years now. It feels like ten Forever, years. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Like before my YouTube channel started. So yeah, like, I think me and Garrett were the seven or eight years ago. Reason why you were like, oh, you could just do YouTube. <laughs> Literally, and then if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. Honestly, freaking blew up into huge different levels of Everything. success because you've done so many different things on YouTube. I feel like where like you had your <laughs> there's no specific niche. Yeah, you had like your shop, then you have like whatever those weird trucks you got now. You got the will it start stuff like show you trucks, have quite like, a few different variations. I feel everything. like your will it start st- series was like that's what blew the channel <laughs> up. Yeah, that's where it like yeah. I need to g- I need to give those a little bit more attention than I do right now, but for sure. But you've kind of I feel like you already accomplished <laughs> them all. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple that have got nine ten million views on them. So I know that's not like as big as a lot of other creators, but they're still, I mean, still cranking. It's big because you got to look at segments. Like it's big in the automotive segment yeah. or in like the that kind of segment, but it's not you know big Mr. Beast segment. But no, no. But I feel like the uh, the amount of views to like subscriber ratio is pretty good as far as like the bigger videos for sure. They probably do well on other platforms too. Yeah. So um, jumping right in, we we've went from not only doing YouTube to having Facebook pages and stuff like that, which is what you like have to do to grow. And we have like a ton of fans on Facebook. Like it's like almost 50, 50. Now people come up and like, Hey, we seen you on Facebook. I'm like, Oh yeah, I forgot we do Facebook now because 90% people underestimate Facebook hundred percent. And you can just repost, repost, repost. And it sees a different audience every time. Their algorithms way better. So for people that don't know, Bruce Wilson, he he's owned a diesel shop. Um, I knew him from the diesel shop at first, where yep. he worked on our we tuned white buffalo way back in the day when it was still uh, what's Garrett's dad's name? Yeah, uh, it was still Mark's. Mark's yeah. Broke many a transmissions in that thing. Yep, got we the sponsorship for you guys. And basically, like, taught us the diesel world in any in any form. <laughs> like we had no idea the diesel world before that, and then. What did you do after that? Then you were doing YouTube full time. Yeah, like doing YouTube full time, kind of working like the tra- the uh, situation changed with like the uh, diesel shops, and I started to work on equipment, and then like YouTube took over completely. Well, I think every diesel mechanic's dream is to not be a diesel mechanic anymore. It's, yeah, it's that's the, kind of the natural. <laughs> you lose your your passion when you work on them every single day. That's a fact. Like Wyatt at Boosted Boys was diesel mechanic, mm-hmm. and then well, Paul. Well, then as well, Bruce. Obviously, I can talk a bit about my background, but Bruce went into the heavy equipment world or the tractor sales. And then that's what I'm involved in now. But so. I obviously come from England originally. Uh, or not obvious to some people. Some people think I'm from <laughs> Australia. Some people, <laughs> yeah. if I tell people to guess, because I don't have a London accent, I'm not from London, <laughs> England. That's the only British accent they know because the British actors and the British songwriters and singers are from London usually. So they hear me and they're like, they can't pinpoint it. Plus, I've been, to, you know, I've been living in America now for half my <laughs> life. 14 years yeah. so it just twists it a little bit mm-hmm. so now they think australia they think you know i get scotland because i'm from close to yeah. scotland in newcastle where i'm originally from a close to newcastle well, i was gonna say the british accent's that. weird because it's very regional Big. it changes exactly y'all you know that most people my don't. wife's dual citizen oh there you go yeah so me too well, my mother-in-law is still british accent and everything so the accent over there changes every 15 minutes so if you drove from bradenton to Sarasota, they would talk different. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's subtle, but if you go from Birmingham to London to Liverpool, to the south, to the north, mm-hmm. it's totally different. And it gets hard to understand, you know, like Liverpool, Birmingham, Newcastle. Well, even like listening to Top Gear my whole life, like those guys oh, yeah. hardly had a British accent almost. Like they didn't, like they don't sound like you'd be like, oh, they're super British. No, like, you have a south. strong accent. Yeah, I'm from the north. I'm from the poor part, you know, yeah. so we, we have a <laughs> thicker okay. accent. That's where it is. So I think that's part of it. But no, I grew up in England racing motorcycles. And then I moved to America because the, the industries in America, the racing is bigger here, more money or whatever. 
So that's the natural progression. If you're good enough, you move to America. Um, <laughs> move to America, and then, you know, that was it. I, I've raced motorcycles, motocross and supercross, and then ended up getting into the heavy equipment business when I got when I retired from racing. And <laughs> After I, he was all broken apart. And all, all messed up, a lot of injuries in that sport. <laughs> Then I'm in heavy equipment, and then obviously a lot of hobbies too, you know, like Bruce, hobbies out, uh, coming out my ears, aeroplanes, cars. It escalates quickly. Everybody's yeah. getting into airplanes lately too, flying in the social media world. I know. It feels very bougie when all your friends start to get helicopters, and you're like, oh, come on, guys, relax. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like, all right, all right. So, airplanes are fairly, like, I want to say cheap compared, compared to, to helicopters. everything else, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, for even like a race car, like I could have an airplane for that price. Exactly. Like yeah. I just had Parker on and he's like, <laughs> race cars are probably more expensive than like a four-seater airplane mm -hmm. Cessna yeah. or something like that. So that's kind of how Paul and I met was like through the equipment business and then his wife is family friends and stuff like that. But we kind of came more together through the equipment business and then it's, you're just kind of bumping heads. How I far did you say take motocross? Heads, but... I was racing professional, so I was in the AMA Supercross AMA motocross. I did some world championship stuff, which actually the world championship is a little smaller than the AMA supercross in America. It's kind of like, you know, our NFL's big here, yeah. but not really everywhere else. I'm completely so, ignorant on same supercross, motocross, yeah, no anything on two wheels. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? It's in one ear out the other. <laughs> right. I'm like, it sounds cool. Like, yeah. You know, I can name, like, the basic people, like, Pastrana and Deegan. Yeah, yeah that's like that, because they're in the YouTube like... world now. <laughs> yeah. There are some old videos of, of y'all guys look up, Paul Coates on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Some <laughs> old, of the... Old interviews are f funny. Some of the worst stuff comes up first. <laughs> you know, the algorithm. The al you guys know more about the it's algorithm. so funny. I'm still old school. I don't believe in... You know, this whole influencer thing. So I'm here with influencers. You showed up here in a Lamborghini, dude. You're an influencer. I sold, yeah. I sold the my, Lamborghini. Uh, I've washed my hands with that now. Like a freaking L.A. car. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. He's actually the one I bought it from. So we'll have to get into that. Yeah. We'll get into that at some point. Yeah, at some point. The but, Huracan. Yeah. yeah. Careful hitting the table too much. It transfers into okay. the bike a little bit. But, yeah, so, and now you guys are down here looking at more cars because... Yeah. Why would it end at just a Huracan? What am I doing, right? It's like things have changed. So like like you said, from like diesel shop, diesel trucks, semis, will it start? Scanias. We'll get Scania's. into that. Is that how you say it? I didn't even the know Scania. how to say it. It's like you drag it out. It's like Scania. Scania. You really have to like. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> yeah. Church it up a little. <laughs> and then um, I just started a second channel, Wilson Speed Co. Because like the channel I've got now, I mean, I feel like we all, it turns into a job, obviously. It's like. Every day you get up, you do it. You enjoy it to some extent, but it's definitely a job. Yeah. And for me, it's like been the heavy duty, turning wrenches all the time, even on video. And I'm just like, I really wanted to break into something where it's like, we just get in the car, get you just go do something cool for the day without getting covered in grease mm -hmm. and having to like crank on something. And I also feel like YouTubers into. do this thing where... You know, if you post like 400 videos on one channel, you almost just not want to post on that one again. You're like, ah, this video needs to be on something else. Yeah. Like you almost just start another channel. Like I saw like Westland started Dude, another channel. Is, and yeah, like he's got it as the Cletus 2 channel. And like Westland's channel is second one's blowing up. Yeah. But even that stuff like all could have been on his main channel. But yeah. it seemed like he just felt this need to, to be like something a different, different spot. Yeah. That's how I feel like now. Because like if I post like anything non heavy duty, non diesel, anything. Just it does not like my the people look at it like mm, no it's not for me even if you did like a twin turbo huracan they would not give anything <laughs> no care at <laughs> they all they're like we're gonna stop watching this guy because he shouldn't have this he should be working on his Peter builds well I've seen that before in your I, I saw in a comment somebody was like why do you keep hopping around projects yeah <laughs> and I feel like that's just normal car guy stuff well it's like my retain my my attention span of like projects is like if I get halfway through and I'm like oh, I don't want to work on this no more it's like oh yeah. it's for sale. <laughs> Well, when you had your, the OG After Hours diesel yeah. truck, that thing the, was successful a couple times. The <laughs> drag truck was definitely successful. So that rolls into, like, meeting, like, first time. So if you guys go way back on Garrett's channel, right? Yeah. I take you guys for a ride at it. Maybe it was on my channel, I don't remember, in the drag truck. And at the time, that was probably the fastest thing either one of you guys had ever been in. Maybe. Mm, probably not him. Maybe me. But it wasn't like we went diesel crazy for fast. sure though. Diesel for sure. Yeah, it was the all-wheel drive launch that like really seated the pants feel. Yeah. 
And Garrett's like, we should diesel swap Leroy. <laughs> this is like when y'all yeah. first got the car. Well, the Cummins are pretty great. <laughs> yeah, they're like the LS of the diesel world for yeah, sure. Yeah, the simplicity. But then we saw you destroy that thing quite a few times, and I think that took some wind. All right, so this <laughs> leads us into our first story. We've got to tell the story, right? So uh, Leroy was broken or something. I don't remember what it was. Normal. But you guys had – you didn't have to be, but you said you'd be at Streetcar Takeover Atlanta before it was now dismantled and gone. Yeah. And Garrett's like, well, let's just put your diesel truck in the trailer in the old DC. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is this not a good trailer. idea. This was like a $4,000 trailer. This is that, a 28-foot, 7,000-pound yeah. 7, rated trailer, five lug axles. They show up, merch loaded in the front. I mean, like two we pallets didn't of merch. realize how heavy your <laughs> truck was because it was cut up pretty good. You put a four-wheel drive diesel truck in there st- that still weighed like 6,000 pounds. Yeah, you could tell the door bent as it pulled in. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this isn't good. Garrett's like, just do it. So we make it all the way to Atlanta. I no melt, blowouts. Melt a, no hang blowouts. on, hang no? on. Melt a piston up there. Did, did, like, So we hang out the rest of the time. Yeah. I think there was like a cut up like Tesla there too. Like that was like one of the first guys that ever cut a Tesla mm-hmm. up, remember? Yep, Tesla Racing Channel. Yep. So we're on the way back. We get to... The turnpike in the, like, Wildwood area. Yeah, by the car. Oh, drive. Split. Yeah. And one of the trailer tires passes us. <laughs> I was like, yep, there it is. I was driving at the time, too. I had the wheel, and, like, I both tires are off. And I look back, and it's just sparks dragging I think it. one was completely gone already. We didn't know. And yeah. then the other one broke off. And yeah. the other one, yeah. So it was probably studs. one for a minute. Yeah. And probably a very short amount of time, right as we came down the hill. Yeah. And I was, like, middle lane in, like, Cooper's traffic. Like, what what do I do? Because <laughs> you're still relatively new to, like, diesel, like, towing anything. Then, I yeah, like. I haven't really, I didn't do that much towing. But You're, then, like, driving straight line kind of guy. <laughs> but also, I didn't know if, like, at first my instinct is, like, well, you know, if I just switch lanes, is the whole trailer going to go yeah. by us? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I probably shouldn't just, like, or, like, am I going to. What's you know, gonna flip the trailer if I try to like cut into the lane quick to get over. Yeah. So I'm kind of just like, oh shit, do I just slow down and hope people don't rear end me? Yeah. So like, <laughs> we pull over and the, apparently the tire that was stolen there had been rubbing the inside of the fender well so much it got so hot it Heating burnt up. it burnt the wood inside the trailer a little bit like yeah. it smoldered like if it we would if it wouldn't have happened the trailer might have gone up in flames maybe yeah I mean, it's definitely plausible it would have definitely been all bruce's fault 100 <laughs> percent. if so, that thing burned down <laughs> we pull yeah it's always bruce's fault we pull over leave the trailer there on the side of the road i think that's when you guys who builds a race car that heavy? y'all were at, ta- at the tampa house still yeah so so we were like mean hours you, mean you go back the next day fix it on the side of the road <laughs> well like the trailer we was never just, the same like it was a whole thing too because yeah. we had to like go back like somehow reverse down an on-ramp for, like, two miles yeah. to get back to the trailer because oh, yeah, right. of where it was. Mm-hmm. You couldn't just, like, go back go back to it. It was, like, a 45-minute round-trip drive mm-hmm. to, like, wow. get back to it. It was one of them where it. there was an exit 10 miles, yeah. you know, 10 or yeah. miles further. It's the worst turn ever in that, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, like, reversing down this on-ramp, and I didn't know how to fix it at the time. I was like, let's go. <laughs> so I was with Bruce, and I was like, Hopefully this guy knows how to fix it. I've known him for two weeks. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. he's not just some schmuck that just destroyed this trailer. Bruce is pretty handy with stuff like that. So yeah, side of the road repairs. I'm on it. So that's like one of our like christening stories of like, <laughs> yeah, stuff happening. Leaving the trailer hours from your house, and then not to mention <laughs> I was panicking because both tires were gone. I was like, man, these could kill someone. Mm-hmm. Like legitimately, two Roll tires down rolling the down the highway could. You see the horror story, like damage. Facebook videos. You've seen some videos, yeah. Yes. Paul's super bad about tire failures, big time on equipment trailers. Lots of <laughs> lots of tire issues, whether they're brand new tires. What was the one that just happened where he he like, where like the valve stem or something had a problem, or oh, it blew all the tires on his t- equipment trailer? I've got it. You know, I've had problems where the valve stems have been left loose when <laughs> installing brand new tires. The inside of the dually tire on the semi trailer will go basically flat, yep. and those really stiff sidewall tires look full of air unless you really not. kick it, but they're not. Mm-hmm. And with it being on the inside, of course, it's flat. You drive it an hour, it disintegrates and into then the it other blows tires. All the tires around it. So yeah. then it's riding on one, or, or you know, all that weight on one. I've even had it where 
I pulled back into the yard and got a little too close to a skid steer sitting with a bucket. And yeah. Busted a couple. Point you know? a tip on the bucket. Yeah. Mm. I've, I've tires, main tires don't go. Spend don't go money well. on your trailer tires. You will do it right the first appreciate time. Appreciate it. Get spares as well. But also, like, a spare, spare bearing is nice. <laughs> and then the other problem was, I think the whole wheel, like, the whole drum was the gone. The whole drum is, like, part of it, yeah. So I we, think the we whole like drum was it gone. On. Yeah. Like, the it whole, came yeah, off the with it. We beat the bearings and everything off of it. It was in bad shape. Yeah, that was, those now, axles were rough. And then <laughs> Kyle got the trailer, and now it's just... I was at Kyle's house the other day. He still has it there. Yeah, it's just sitting there <laughs> green. He's like, yeah, that thing's a piece of junk. Oh, yeah, I can't <laughs> he believe doesn't he doesn't even want to sell it to anybody. <laughs> That's the other problem is, like, you can't really sell it to anybody, but trailers are so outrageous right now. Dude, I know. That... That, that thing doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Well, tell me, like, I don't know the YouTube world, but here's the problem I see with it. Like, Bruce makes all these videos about beating on everything because that's the audience, you know. They love to see that. And then he's got to try to sell it after it. <laughs> all this hit, all this stuff, it's like dirt all over the internet, right? I would not buy something that Bruce used to own for sure. <laughs> no that's shot. why I just have to trade it into dealerships. <laughs> yeah, they take the hit. Just got to go to them or, like, I mean, I had stuff too. I'm like, I can't. That's like all this. of us, though, because we've documented every little thing we've done to it, whether it be good or bad. And I don't like selling things too because, like, I, everything I've ever sold, like, if that guy calls me up after, I'm like, no, this is not my problem anymore, dude. Like, <laughs> go to YouTube. You can see where I fixed it already. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is your, like, when I buy something from someone, it's my problem at yeah. that point. Like, unless it's like a title issue or something. Yeah. Unless it's stolen or something. <laughs> Yeah, There's of no, course. no warranties. Yeah. No. As, <laughs> this as is, is the king of taillight warranty right here. As is where <laughs> is. no warranties expressed or, or implied. implied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's the equipment seen, business. Taillights, they're gone. Yeah, so you guys have the equipment business together then? No, no not together. No. He does like okay. mainly construction equipment. I was real hot and heavy in the tractors for a few years, but the market is like, like everything else changed literally, I'd say, in a week's time. Like, yeah, flipped. it's slowed. Hmm. So I like went f all in on YouTube and we started building Facebook pages and that made up for, you know, the loss of equipment revenue. So still do sling a few pieces here and there or I'll find stuff and sell it to this guy if it doesn't fit yeah. my bill. But something big we just did, every social media person's doing it is giveaways. Mm, the classic. Yeah, so you, I'm sure almost everybody's familiar with my blue cap over. Like that was one of the one, uh, like a official rig. That was a show. unique giveaway. Because it takes not just any person yes. to own a cab over. <laughs> like, if I got a cab over, <laughs> like, if I just got a cab over tomorrow, I don't know what I would do with it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that looks cool. Can I tow an open bumper tow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we gave, we did a, our first, we did, I did like a couple little giveaways because I was like skeptical. I'm like, man, it's because it's a huge risk for creators. I yeah. feel like, like if you give away this $50,000 rig, it's like, am I going to be able to at least break even or something? And that's a big one to start with, too. Yeah, like so we started start with, small. like, we started with this, like, little cab over RC truck, right? And then we moved up to a little, another RC, because we had the RC shop. I was like, we need to get mm -hmm. rid of this stuff. We'll try it. And a little R, another big RC car with, like, some cash. And then we went, like, straight. We did a Chinese excavator. Who doesn't love those? Those things are everywhere. Oh, yeah, I wanted one of those. We did one of those, and then it did well. I was like, oh, well... We was, need something. Was it was like, quality? Was it decent? They're solid for the money. Like, it's not... Like, I have, like, one five, acre property. It'd work fine You just you. want to putz around, maybe dig a gully every now and then. It'd like, be fine. Yeah. Not a whole If you lot. go, like, try to make a living with it, yeah. it's going to break like, within the first get week. Get an engine out, something simple. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my engines are light. It would. It might pick an engine up. I don't know. But, but then we, we jumped right into the cab over. I was, like, I was like, what do we do next? I was like, I was thinking about selling it because, like, with some of these projects... Like, semis are, I guess it depends on anything. You can only go so far in, like, making content with it that yeah. isn't getting repetitive or, like, it was either, like, do a full restoration on the truck, make it, like, show-worthy, which wasn't really fitting the bill or the budget or the views, and then I was like, well, it's in the best shape it's ever going to be in as it sits right now. Let's get, I was wanting to sell it. And then people didn't like the price, stuff like that. I was like, well, well, and they take up a lot of space too. It's like you've only got so much a space. A lot of space. You got a lot of nice stuff. You want to keep it inside, and you know, renting a building or owning a property, you've only got so much space. But the yeah. big thing for me in the giveaways, which you told me, yeah, I'm always looking at everything from a business standpoint or whatever. But you've got to set the date at the start of it. So yeah, it's not like you can. About the way here. It's not like you can put it out and say, like, when I've made X amount of dollars, we'll give it away. The sweepstakes rules or whatever. You have to. 
basically say that at this day that's when we shut it off so like it doesn't matter if you've what if it lost flops? yeah what if it flops yeah. you know when you're doing it legit too yeah you have to yeah well I mean, some people yourself. do things pretty shadily i'm like oh, I know. i've seen people they're like giving away a motor i'm like are you just like doing that like we're, that's not just like we're doing a waffle <laughs> yeah <laughs> like but like, okay. you know, it's fine when like the guy with like, you know, a thousand followers on Facebook does like something like that. Yeah, but then but like these fairly big creators just do like these haphazard. Open themselves the up to huge liabilities. Yeah, I'm like, you guys are wild, man. Like, Because I was like, there's like different ways to do it. Because I was like, okay, we can do like these raffle ticket websites. I was like, because I was like. All right, guys, I wanted to interrupt this real quick to say if you enjoy what we're doing here, I only ask one thing. Hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. It helps us grow, and we can keep this thing going. Now, let's get back to the podcast. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. Looking for the easy way out, maybe. I was like, okay, well, we don't have to deal with merch. Really. People can just buy tickets and be done. But yeah. that's like technically like an illegal lottery, I feel like. Oh, yeah, that's fully just gambling. And I'm like, how are these people running these things? And... So after talking to some people with like minds and they're like, you definitely just have to do the sweepstakes, do it right. Because in Florida, we have to bond it, mm -hmm. you know, with the giveaways. So I don't know what our next giveaway is going to be yet. We've got like a snap on toolbox. We just bought a load of full of tools. I want to do like maybe a one or two week just to keep merch flowing. That's because the other. it's like the only way to sell merch nowadays. <laughs> yeah. You have to give stuff away because. Ruined it. All Me you and Leo have talked a lot about giveaways yeah. side by side. Leo, yeah, yeah, <laughs> have talked about this a lot because he's done done yeah, a lot, yeah. and I'm like, well, these are serious too. The other flip side is you need to do it when you know you have really good content coming out, yeah, and a lot of videos to put out because you know if you do it tomorrow and you're like, oh shit, it's actually a slow month of content for me because it's not Your all promotions not there. Yeah, you're not you're having to spend advertising money on Facebook. So we learned a lot. Like for our first giveaway, we definitely came out on top. So I was really happy about that, um, and it made it all worth it. The guy that won it picked it up, literally picked the truck up today. He flew in oh, yesterday, cool. picked him up, hung out, gave him the full tour. They stayed last night and worked on a truck with us. <laughs> the guy happened to be his brother's has semi truck. You requirements to win the truck to drive it home. You can win it, yeah. But the person who ever drove it away had to have a CDL. Makes sense. So his brother, Even if luckily, you don't have anything you're towing or anything, you still have to have still a CDL because of the weight of the vehicle. You can't just put a toilet in the passenger seat. You could go I'll through say. all the process maybe before it left our place. Because yeah. for people that don't know, if you have a toilet in your semi truck, it's, it's an RV, RV, and, and then, you don't need a CDL. Well, welcome to America. You can basically get a fifty foot long motorhome that weighs as much as an RV or, or a semi or more yeah tow it down the road and basically with just a stacker anything you want just happy go lucky driving in the fast lane yeah. without a CDL preferably over the age of 70 <laughs> when you drive <laughs> yeah. it away in Florida <laughs> yeah 100 percent. it's like the oldest man you've ever seen so yes. it's like I'm going from my Prius to the white knuckled just driving it under foot a RV yeah. with a double stacker yeah you look at you look from you know you're driving past and it's Dumbledore holding the wheel you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, oh, God. so yeah they, they picked it up today the brother was a CDL holder a really cool dude and he happened to be a semi-truck mechanic because I told him like it's a 1992. Like, we've done everything yeah. possible to make it as, you know, as great as possible. So when whoever won it, we rebuilt the engine in it, like, did everything the during the giveaway. So he talks, like, making content with views. Yeah. So I'm like, it's still a 1992. <laughs> so, you know. You have to understand that. You have to understand bit. that. It's cool, but it's old. It was already worn out when Bruce was born, yeah. probably. <laughs> yeah, you know? literally. And we went through and redone everything. Put all new tires on it for him and all that. So... Today when he's leaving, I, I like had a brand new toolkit I bought at Flying J or something. I'm like, here's this. Here's some airline splice connectors and uh, some shop rags and some brake clean. Take it with you because they're driving it back to Texas. Oh wow! So That's it's like a 16 hour drive. Oh man! But you haven't heard anything bad, right? So. No, I'm like, I'm like, I sell balls. I haven't heard anything yet. So. Once they make it through Louisiana I-10, they're safe. Yeah, That's the worst just, stretch of road in the country right yeah, there for, like, grumpiness. Yeah. And they're in a cab over. I mean, I was in an RV once towing a trailer, and I was, like, hand-over-hand hand steering yeah, this thing. Yeah, counter-steering. Like, through this, like, whoops. And I'm like, wait, we're on a 70-mile-an-hour highway. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, they're gone. No phone calls yet. Thank goodness. But, I mean, I drove that thing everywhere with, like, minimal issues. I mean, I drove it all the way to Michigan with, like, whistle and diesel and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we did have one mishap. 
this is a really cool, I think, funny story. We go to the, we meet side by side blog at the sand dunes. This is like the first, I like brought those guys together. We're, we're pulling out, got my mega truck on there, Cody's Monster Max. And we like pull out of this parking lot. We just had dinner and there's like fans outside because Cody's huge. And I like honk the train horns, you know, pulling out. Well, I honk them and they don't shut off. So it's like, Whoa! and we're driving around. I'm like, this thing's about to run out of air. I'm like jerking on it, trying to get it to like shut off. And it's air brakes. And it's air brakes. I'm like, I'm like pulling over because I know it's about to lock the whole rig down. And, and out of air, there's so many people. Brakes. So now people are like walking down the side because they see the trucks. No, can't start it up. It just builds air and then horns start going off again. So I'm like taking pliers and like busting the dash out of the top of this thing to get the valves like up inside. And like rigged it all up so it worked, and we're broke on the side of the road. Just <laughs> that's like the only time the truck has ever like broke down, and it well, wasn't and really like, broke down. Near Silver Lake is like a very small road community mm-hmm. where it's not like <laughs> there's not like a highway it was like, like right, right out there. of there. We did like got just far enough out of Silver Lake to find a restaurant for dinner. Yeah, there's not very much right no. around there. It's very small roads and stuff. Probably not very semi truck friendly. No, it was like we you know the main parking area in Silver Lake before you mm-hmm. go up the hill. We got the semi pulled in there and unloaded, and that's like yeah, really tight area too. And then also having Monster Max with you guys yeah. is not easy. Dude, that was a that was a whole deal. But the other interesting thing about YouTube is for me, it's like it's they're like it's another world. Like I said, I'm a bit old school in the mentality and stuff. And it's like, so wait, a YouTuber, something good can happen and it's good for content. Something bad can happen, it's, it's good, good for, for content. content. <laughs> it's a win win. Get pulled over, good DOT, DOT yeah. problems, get the most views, right? It's like <laughs> Anything, it's like yeah, it just makes yeah makes life easy when a bad thing happens and you make more money from it. You know, like hauling Monster Max on the trailer, we're like fifteen feet. Legal limit without a permit's thirteen six. Legal like limit, legal limit with a permit's fourteen eight, fourteen six. You're talking height, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So like, and in Michigan, like all their bridges, like instead of being like straight straight across beams, like over here in Florida, they're all like curved. So we're like take the going in point. between the two lanes every mm-hmm. time we would like go down the road. It was just super sketch. <laughs> it's funny with, like, you were talking giveaway and, like, you kind of didn't know how to sell it or what to do yeah. with it after. And, like, once a YouTuber builds a project, they kind of don't know what to do. And me and Garrett have joked about this where it's like, yeah. for a lot of YouTubers, best case scenario for some cars is they just burn down. <laughs> like, <laughs> and you get gone. a video of it just being gone. No, like, you don't have to park it. Nobody ever asks you about it. It's, nobody buys they understand it. understand that to it's sell it, never coming back. And it's just gone. Great video. Just <laughs> Yeah. People give me such a hard time. Because I do turn over, I wouldn't say, quite a few projects. I mean, I don't have, now the blue collar's gone, I don't really have anything that's like original to the channel, I guess. But, I, you know, the flatbed. The, I was going to ask about the that. The flatty. So the mega truck. Uh, a lot of people, I've never done, like, I told the whole story. So the mega truck. Whenever I was off YouTube for a while, like when all the jumping, all the crazy stuff we did, it bent the shocks like inward at the front. Jumping a t- diesel truck is like crazy. That it broke the motor mounts on the engine. And like we tried like stretching the frame out to fix it and it was like unrepairable. Mm-hmm. So we took it all apart and I had, I ended up just scrapping the frame because it was just not fixable. Yeah, I feel like I remember that from quite a while back where you were like, it's done, and I it's, feel like people loved that flatbed, I and it had a lot too. of history. And it was like my dad's truck; he bought it new, and yeah. So I ended up buying another one, and I haven't really made this public anything. Um, bought another one. We went to like the Florida Truck Show in Miami a year or so ago. Not the last one, but the one before. Melted the engine down, just diesel, typical. Doing just a burnout. M- melted all the pistons and locked up tight. Um, I was like, okay, well, we're going to build a new engine. So I took the engine that was originally in the flat, flat nasty, the mega truck, rebuilt it, decompressed mm-hmm. it. So it's like really low compression. And then to combat all the heating issues with diesels getting hot during the two minute burnout, we've got this crazy water to air intercooler, um, on the bed of the truck. And then we've got a regular radiator with electric fans, but we've also got in the bed, looks like a toolbox, 50 gallon water tank for cooling. To spray water or just for for the radiator and engine. So the, it's going to be pressurized, it's just pumping. Well, there's, it's just to flow a ton of water. I mean, it, Fifty gallons. But if like a it's radiator, it's going to have to be pressurized. No, the pumps are just nuts. You'll you'll understand when okay. you see it. Interesting. And then we've got James did that where he's got a pretty big <laughs> this tank. tank swelled. I remember it's it broken up every time he's done a burnout. <laughs> yeah. 
And then we've got another 50 gallon water tank next to it of ice water. Okay. So we may not even have to worry about the cooling situation too much because it's going to have like icy water flowing in the engine. So you have about 10,000 gallons of water on hand <laughs> on the during bed, your burnout. Just to make a burnout happen with the diesel. So, so we've if done you do like, a burnout and something goes wrong, you're watering down the whole pad. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Shh. Yeah, everything. It's just a toolbox. It's full of tools on the back. As long as it's not coolant. Yeah, it's Coolant definitely on the burnout pad is, is the worst. People don't realize that. So I'm actually Monday going to pick it up from, I had my... Built the engine, got it set in the truck, and I just, I'm not great with fabrication, like, whatsoever. I can build an engine, whatever. So I had set it to Firepunk Diesel in Ohio, and they've, like, it's, like, top-notch. It looks like a drag truck, but it's just a, a regular old Bruce, I truck. know you're not good with fabrication. You were part of Ruby's <laughs> oh, 1.0. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You were the one that helped us on Ruby Turbo Kit 1.0. That's when James, like, first came or, like, first got hired, and me and James were fighting about stuff the whole time. And yes. Garrett's like, y'all need to stop because <laughs> we were on live. It was very, um, it was quite a stressful five days or whatever, four days. Turboing of, that car. Yeah. But so regardless, you were. You, we made it happen. Yeah. I was going back to your story. I didn't want to interrupt you too but, much. So yeah, burnout truck. Firepunk. Burnout truck. We're picking up. We're going to, we're playing as the dyno it for like two minutes at 4,000 RPMs. If we don't overheat the dyno first, just to like really load it up heavy. Yeah. That dyno is going to love that. Yeah, so we've done a lot to the engine stuff, too, to make the engine run cooler. So without, I mean, getting a little technical, diesels on your regular common rail diesel engines, like Cummins, for example, the injectors fire three to five times every cycle. So really quick. Mm -hmm. We've put massive injectors in this truck. So right now it's it made like 850 horsepower on the dyno, which is plenty for a burnout. Yeah. That's like tires lighting on fire on a diesel truck burnout because the torque. Yeah, well, that two minutes, you shouldn't need two minutes with that kind of power and torque. Yeah, so... Especially with the amount of weight that's going to be in mm -hmm. the back. <laughs> it's going to be heavy back It's going to be, and it's a flat steel flatbed on the back. Yeah. So with your average injectors, they fire three to five times per stroke. With that horsepower, we only need like 100% bigger than factory injector. We've put a 350% factory in, over factory injector in the truck, so it fires one time. Which creates less heat. Yeah, just a so ton it's just of like fuel. yeah, it's just like just a fire flooding hose. the engine. So it's almost putting the fire out, mm -hmm. but not. So it should have lower exhaust temps, and it's decompressed like a lot. Does that affect the lubricant cyst? Because they kind of need the fuel for the lube on. It's going to have a lot of fuel. Yeah, I didn't know because it needed. Like, it well, for... to, well, it's still learning. We're figuring it out. But <laughs> yeah. it, it all and everything with a lot of the guy, fire punk, Those guys are. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Top of, of the line. Yeah. So they, everything should work. So we're going to debut that at the Florida Truck Show, which is at Orlando Speed World. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool event. And they're going to be... Yeah, that's a that seems like a big one from the stuff I've seen them post already. Yeah, so they combined it with an Outlaw Diesel Super Series, like, points race. Oh, okay, that's So, like, sense. all the fastest diesels in the country will be there. Oh, okay. Which is really great for Jordan with a truck meet because it's, like... When is it, that one? It's, it's, it's in March. It's this, Oh, it's the same weekend as Garrett's uh, first race. Oh. The April whatever. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Okay, so there so is a big all diesel, diesel truck yeah, event. Yeah, JJH is like, I'm going to have to go to that. Sorry, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. I mean, he's not really JH Diesel anymore, though. He's, he's mostly a gasser guy now. Yeah. <laughs> all of his burnout cars are gas. So I think he says he's gonna, we're going to go there because Firepunk and all those guys are going to be there, so yeah. we're going to. That would be, like, the big stage show, I guess, for us. There's a smaller show in Tennessee we're going to go to, like, mid-March. It seems like it's, like, the biggest diesel event next to the one up in Indy. UCC. Yeah. I've never been to UCC, actually. I know why it goes every year, but it seems mm -hmm. awesome. But it seems like the one in Orlando is going to be, like, the biggest diesel event next to that one. That's not, like, a towing event, I guess. Yeah, I'm like super excited event. about that. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I like seeing kind of out-of-the-box events at these tracks because it, it helps Orlando them a lot. Too. Yeah. And even South Georgia is adding a bunch of like diesel and mud events. Really? I didn't yeah. know about that. SGMP just built a bounty hole. Really? At the drag strip. So they're doing like uh, an event that's going to kind of incorporate everything. I guess. Well, like years ago when I used to do sled pulling like 2013-ish I uh, NT or what is it? NHRDA, National Hot Rod Diesel Association, mm -hmm. used to come to the East Coast. Now they're out west ma mainly, but they held an event at South Georgia Motorsports Park. They had a diesel drag race and a sled pull. Yeah, and that uh, there's a big like clay area. Maybe that's where the bounty holes at. Probably, I saw them digging it. Diesel 
events are cool because you can it's one of the only events where you can see a, a vehicle on the dyno that splits in half yes. like a can opener just opened it up blows up and the whole thing just comes apart <laughs> and diesel events are like emissions out the ass right oh yeah <laughs> fuel going everywhere EPA. oil going everywhere <laughs> yeah it's all off-road diesel too so all in mexico taxed. none of these are here you know in america <laughs> what is it the off-road diesel is less taxed or something though it's yeah, literally the same it. exact fuel it's just not taxed and it's it red, red dye it's yeah. dye red yeah i know i've seen people <laughs> i've seen some crazy stories of people using that in their oh, it's street all vehicles the time, yeah. getting in trouble yeah all the time it's so weird that it's just not taxed i guess it's for what heavy machinery off-road farm use and stuff farm like that use and the bad you know like the school board uses it so it's like you know <laughs> do as i say not as i do. do so the government uses it so the school buses run on red all that stuff you know but it's no, like the government vehicles are all deleted non emissions too yep it's huh. crazy yeah that's always weird you ever and, notice um, how the school buses the new ones have the the exhaust comes out the bumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, man, the they really made those clean. Like, not just like an exhaust pipe. They like cut the bumper to have yeah. like a nice clean exhaust location. You know, the internationals, I think, or yeah, whatever they are. They really yeah, went next level on those things. But that's funny. they'll all be in South America here in 20 years. I go down there. <laughs> you go to Paul South America. ships a lot of equipment all over the country too. You go down to South America and they they call them chicken buses, right? So they uh, basically American school buses that have been sent down to Panama, Costa Rica, wherever. And they individually owned, they pimp them out like, you know, like Puerto Ricans or Costa Rican or whatever. They love modified stuff. Yeah, Bruce, would, Bruce would thrive down there. <laughs> Everything's got, you know, tassels and Hanging from, flames, you know, up, us into something flames up the side and loud music playing. And they're just American school buses, buses. <laughs> but they're all painted up and... and Jeez. Over here, the best you see is they cut them up to pick oranges. Yeah, yeah. And that's not even cool well, at they, all. Well, they load them down full of watermelons. Yeah, or that. They cut, take all the seats out, and they just fill the whole bus of watermelons, and it's like way overweight. I know, I mean, you like, see them rolling down the street, and you're like, one of those watermelons. They get on the highway, out. too, sometimes. Watermelons I've seen them on are 75. so heavy. When you fill, like, a truck up full of them... Yeah, it's just... It's just straight water. They're just water. <laughs> yeah, they're just, like, blocks of yeah. water. But they cut them to where, like, people can just drive down the orange fields and pick them yeah, right throw, into the yeah. school bus. <laughs> but all the orange groves around in Florida are pretty much dying Dying anyways. from the greening, yeah, so. yeah. Now it's just expensive houses everywhere. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, the one by the Freedom Factory, like, it... The orange grove, It yeah. just died. Like, yeah. it wasn't even, like, they sold it It's like this disease that, like, gets into one tree. It's like these vines. It's called greening. When I was a kid, we would get paid to go pull the vines out of the trees for mm -hmm. some extra cash and stuff. And once it, like, gets in, it's like... It's yeah, done. like there all is no, of Florida is pretty tore up with it right now. And it's all like in South America now. And stuff. Now most of the orange juice uh, comes from Brazil, I think. Yeah, you know, so some you hmm. know certain places. It's cheaper for them to do it down there, and ship it to America than it is to it's do American it in America. Labor costs. You know, Brazil is the second largest YouTube audience. Really, Port Portuguese is like the the I second no biggest. I thought India was maybe. Oh, it's, I think it, I'm pretty sure it's Brazil. It's crazy. Brazil's got a big population too. It's real. We always discount every other country, Americans at least, because yeah, most don't Americans tie me don't, in, don't, don't tie me into that. Most brush. Americans don't get out and travel. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what? Well, there's such <laughs> there's a big audience there. here, you know? Like, yeah. Big audience, big country. Yeah. I can't even, I can't, I can hardly focus on one market. And that like leads me into like more conversation. So recently I, I was like, it's, we've, Paul and I are, maybe, We've been talking about somewhere, but it's super hard to be original. We were talking about, like, you with the podcast and stuff, mm -hmm. right, and YouTube videos. Saturated. It's so hard. Everyone's got a podcast. It's like every – yeah, like that. And, like, the Will It Start stuff was great, but now everybody does a Will It Start. It's, like – it's yep. so saturated. I've, that's why I've gotten to the point now where, like, I used to go out and look for Will It Start videos, like, drive and try to find something's been sitting, but now – I got to the point where I'd find them and they I would start them up, but they wouldn't do as good. The views wouldn't be there, even though it was like a really great video, in my opinion. So now I've like let them come to me. Someone say, hey, I've got this sitting in the field. And the ones that have always come to me, like say, hey, come do this video, have flourished. So being original has been extremely difficult. So one night, how long have I had this guy here? Like four months now? Yeah, Seems like a long you. time, doesn't it? But it's only been four months. Maybe four months ago, like four months. I'm like, man. I thought you were I partners like in the company by how much. Seems like it. Thing. Seems like so, it. Stock. 
He's yeah, sure. risking <laughs> risking his whole following of Peterbilt fans for yeah. these for these <laughs> ugly uh, uh, European trucks. So I'm like at home on the couch one night. I'm always every now and then like I'll get on Craigslist. Because mm. sometimes there's a deal on there that some old fogey has, like, posted something there because he doesn't know what Facebook is yet. Yeah, yeah. And he, Craigslist either, like, crazy good deals or scams. He does it while driving his motorhome down I-75. <laughs> yeah. He's just posting on Craigslist. <laughs> so I'm like, I search semi-trucks, and then this ad comes across. It says, um, so I should have screenshot it. Maybe I did, but it was, like, super rare show truck or something. I'm like, what the heck is this? So I click on it says nothing about Scania. It just says super rare show truck. I click on it, and a picture of a Scania shows up. I'm like, no hmm. way. And it's in Daytona. So I'm like, and you've dealt with Craigslist before, right? Yeah. If there's not a phone number there, and it's just like the Craigslist email, they never get back to you. Yep. Like it's just gone with the wind. Yeah. So I just a message all, in all a bottle. Their, all just their, a message <laughs> literally. In a bottle. So there was a Craigslist email. I hit them like, I'll buy this right now. This red Scania that I have, they wanted like eighteen or twenty thousand for it. I was like, for me, is like the only one I've ever seen anywhere for sale in the country. Yeah. What was the thought process? Was it was instantly like, like people like, are gonna love this? I like jumped up. I was like, Amber, this my is wife, new. you're not gonna understand what's happening right now. <laughs> this guy's not gonna mess me back. And I hit him up. It was like one o'clock in the morning. I had an email when I woke up. It like so sleep in. You need to email him. <laughs> at least. And I was like, hey, I was, he's like still have it. I'm like, call me right now. He calls me like that. I was like, where is it at? I'll buy it right now. Mm-hmm. It's in Daytona. So I call Paul. He's got a plane. I was like, can you fly me to Daytona? Weather's terrible. Like, he calls me. It's thunderstorm. And he's like, Paul, we can see the I need to get to Daytona. Like, we're like flying it's level with the clouds. Somewhere. A fall like, like all the rainfall. We're like flying around them. Like we can see lightning off. We got to get this old, uh, this old uh, we gotta get this right now. It's not that far. You know? <laughs> no, like, it's not that far. Give me there right now. Because the owner was like, he's a carnival operator. And that's how it got here. He shipped it from Belgium. Like that and a few other European trucks, but so Scania is like, Carney. yeah, Carney. So he was out, and it was at this other Carney guy's house. And he it, wasn't from Gibsonton; he was from. <laughs> yeah. Was he from overseas? The guy or not? Yeah, he's from yeah. Belgium. So it was at this other guy's place where he stored it or whatever, and he's like, "I don't know if I'm gonna make it." I'm like, "I don't care. I'm coming right now with the cash. Don't tell me anything else." So like Paul's, Paul's like, desirable. "I don't know." Paul's probably like, wasn't another guy that wanted it. Literally, anything. probably nobody. Yeah, but to me, I'm you. like. Wheels are spinning, and Paul's like, we can go tomorrow. I'm like, we have to go right now. So we get in the flame. Let's risk our lives for the soul. <laughs> he drops Kenya. me off, and he dips. And then I think, was it Ryan? with My cameraman, Ryan. He's awesome, dude. And I'm like, I'm looking at it. It's like so surreal. Like, I've never been so excited about content in my life. And to this day, they still excite me so much. They are unique They're looking. They're so you the technology cool. would blow your mind. Yeah, really. They're, what they were doing in the '90s is what they're putting in trucks now. Well, Maybe I know. wouldn't even say that. Like, like they have the technology in this '96 is still more advanced than what's in my new, so, brand new Peterbilts. Obviously, people that listen know I'm very ignorant on most <laughs> of this stuff because I don't know anything Other than about an LS or Cadillac. heavy equipment like that or like a you know. Like what's so? What is so special about them? They're V8s, right? Not all of them, but the biggest thing to point out, and I use the word all the time, is they're engineered. American trucks are engineered to an extent, like right. So like, Peterbilt makes the cab and the chassis. That is it. Mm-hmm. Like the engines are made by Cummins, Caterpillar, Detroit, whatever. The transmissions are made by someone else. The rear ends are made by someone else. Even the dry shafts. Yeah. Like, Peterbilt like builds that, parts and then they put all these parts together, and they're like, oh, we need to run an airline from the brake pedal to the back. Let's just run it, <laughs> and then zip tie it all up. Scania builds the cab. They build the frame. They build the engine. They build the transmission. They build the rear ends. They build the whole truck, so it's... Isn't Mac a little bit like that? Sorry to, like, ruin the, the new, story. The new Macs, I think, are starting to be like that here, but they're now bought out by... Volvo. Volvo, yeah. Volvo. No, Volvo's pretty good, right? So, yeah. but even, like, the Euro- American versions of, like, Volvo are still lacking European versions of Volvo I trucks. would imagine the European are kind of have to do that because, like, it's a small island country where they can't just, like, the U.S. can just kind of put all these pieces together. Yeah. They kind of have to make everything. To, wouldn't you think that would make the most sense, though? Because I look at how stuff's made, and it seems to come from everywhere. 
like you know the aeroplanes they make even though the Boeing makes most of the stuff mm -hmm. the fuselage is made in Kansas or somewhere it's, it's on a train all all the way out to uh, you know they're based out in the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. and it's like that doesn't make that much sense why not have a mega factory yeah. you know like the Tesla does or whatever yeah a giga factory just build whatever, it all yeah. That makes the most sense. I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, Maybe it takes like with, a lot more to do it that way, I guess. By using train, they're so limited on how big they can build mm -hmm. something. Tunnels and railways. They have to build things specifically to fit on a train. That's a lot of stuff. Like, if you, if you, you know, notice, almost everything's made either to fit in a shipping container mm -hmm. or onto a truck. Everything's eight foot wide, you know. It's a lot of... I'm sure everything's kind of made to ship, you know. It's, yeah, like NASA, the rockets that they use are specifically sized because they have to fit on a train. So, like, really? they could probably be better if they didn't have to fit on, on a, a train, train. <laughs> to ship <laughs> somewhere. Like, Why have they got to ship a rocket? That's from, crazy. Well, they have to go from, because they take off at one spot and land somewhere else, right? Well, they also, they build them, some of them, in Texas. In that, uh, and they have to go to Cape Coral to launch. El, right? El pa whatever, South El Padre Island, Texas, is where they launch a bunch. Mm -hmm. But then they also launch a bunch in Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. So they probably have to ship things and there's around. there's big aerospace, you know, pockets around. Like Huntsville, Alabama, I think, is big on aerospace, which, yeah. you know, I, just, I guess, whoever's working there. You know, I've met space, you know, what is it, rocket scientists, basically, from Huntsville, Alabama. Doesn't doesn't add up to me. But there's, it's there's, actually even crazier, too, because, like, everything has to fit on a train, and the train tracks are based <laughs> off of Roman... Old, uh, they're, like they're literally like four feet wide or something like and that. And that yeah. size is based off of then, like Roman carriages. Yeah, exactly. back in the day. So like it's everything's it's based done. off of that. It's, they don't want to restart over, isn't yeah, it? It's like the metric re, system. It's like reinventing the wheel. They yeah, don't want to. In, they game. don't want to bring the metric system in, which makes a lot of sense. No, but no it, base uh, ten. <laughs> and then everything is everything is already made with you know standard stuff. So I guess so we'll yeah, just keep it. The Scania's. I compare it to like opening the hood on a BMW. People are like, this looks way complicated. I don't want to touch something mm -hmm. like this. Or in like any European car, for example. And like a lot of my viewers are like, these are like way too complicated. Your American trucks are the only way to go. Were they made in like Sweden, right? Aren't you just there? They're made in Sweden. Yeah, I was just there. Um, but like it's just engineered. It's like American trucks, like something rubs, it has a problem. You know, you're going to be working on it. These trucks, you, there's a lot going on, but everything has its home. So there's not like lots of failure points because it's been designed to work perfectly yeah. with what it's made for and they last a lot longer, I think. Well, that's completely stupid on them because you got to make things that fail or else you won't make more money. Well, the, the thing about those trucks is they get used up there. Yeah. Because American trucks were only limited to 80,000 pounds. That's just the average truck. Mm -hmm. There they run 60 metric tons, which is 62.2, like 100. 130, 140,000 pounds. Oh, shit. Everywhere. But there is people, like, obviously, to fact check it, there is people hauling heavier than 80,000 here. Some of the states, you'd haul a number at 120, and I've met yeah, guys Yeah, but, but these are, like, box trailers. Like, your average so truck this is just your normal guy. are heavy all yeah. the time. But that's also all they kind of have. Like, they don't just have, like, a 3,500, you know, so No, they don't have pickups. Well, they do have, like... It's, like, cars, and then... They, they use a lot of vans in Europe. They have medium Tons duty of vans. stuff. You'll see vans everywhere, like your yeah. uh, Ford Transit, Mercedes Sprinters all over. They don't use trucks like we do in America. Yeah. But that also is so weird. I mean, it was like that when I was in Australia. Like, mm -hmm. people are towing what we would be like, you need a 3,500 dually <laughs> with to like tow that. With, like, a Sprinter van-looking thing, yeah. Or with, like, a ute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> What? <laughs> That's a unibody. <laughs> like, yeah, they're all unibody flatbeds yeah. everywhere. <laughs> like they're towing like a full size vehicle with that. <laughs> but. That's what that's what they do a lot, and then they, they love also commodores. Have road they love commodores and stuff over there, don't yep. they? It's but Australian mm -hmm. people are crazy as well. I mean, that's part of it. <laughs> they are. It's kind of just like Florida the Wild West. Over there, yeah. <laughs> it's just a but giant, a way Florida. bigger Florida. Yeah. Well, it's bigger, but the population's not that big. They only live right around the edge. Yeah. yeah. Like most of it's just nothing. Big giant <laughs> rock in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anything's out there besides a couple of coal mines. <laughs> really, <laughs> and a lot of meat. That's crazy. Yeah. The so the Scania. I say it different every time. I just feel like it's so long to say Scania. Yeah. That's probably fun, though. You should do that for this because <laughs> there will be a lot of comments correcting you. you should just do a live saying People love to correct like people, don't they, on YouTube. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, this it. is a guy that's totally, like, social media 
dark. So not he's like it. a good outside, not into it. outside voice. So I went out videos. Obviously, I picked it up. Video did like five hundred thousand views, and which is really good for my channel because I was like averaging yeah. like eighty two hundred thousand. Paid for itself right there. Yeah, it's paid video. for itself yeah. pretty quick, and videos were doing great, doing great. Then I like started picking up crazy audiences from Europe. Lots of European viewers. People like, have even showed like, up here, right? Yeah, it went from being like 60% USA audience to like 40%, which is oh, wow. not the greatest thing for advertisers, no. but um, <laughs> the audience changed and then I like started beating on the truck like Bruce Wilson does and like people got mad, views went down a little bit. I was like, mm. well, they're new people, <laughs> but like that the, didn't realize what you do. Yeah, the so European, they didn't expect you to do what you normally do. The Bruce European truck Bruce. scene is like... If you like look at a truck wrong, they get upset. Well, yeah, because there's finite number of them. Because so you well, have to they're show just a like more respect. there's a huge loyal fan base to Scania trucks. So then I ended up buying another one in Canada, and that's what made the views keep going even higher and higher. Cream puff, right? Yeah, for a year. So to have one here in the U.S. legally, they have to be at least 25 years old. Okay. Kind of like all the Crash other test rating stuff, import stuff. Emissions um, and stuff, yeah. So the. 25-year-old Scania's are pretty hard to find in really great shape because it's a 25-year-old semi mm -hmm. that's been used. It's not like importing like a JDM car or something. Yeah, that's like been sitting Japanese the, people whatever. keep their stuff perfect. Yeah, so it's a little but also like a, a sports car. Yeah, you're keep nice. Yeah, so I bought one in Canada. Tried doing the import process myself because I read some like stuff people importing cars from Canada, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, just have this paper filled out. Anything you think you know about importing, you don't. But well, Bruce also thought it was going to be a piece of cake, and right. it never is. Let's so be honest. I show up to the border, like come. I wait like three hours just to get across the Detroit border, into the line, and the guy's like, "You want the bad news now or later?" I'm like, "Now." He's like, "You're going back to Canada." I was like, "No." So the U.S. was making it hard, yeah. or was it I Canada? Know, doesn't Canada care. was making it hard to leave. The U.S. is like, "You're not bringing this in here. You don't have the right paperwork." It's in our Did system. you have any paperwork? Yeah, I had paperwork. If it was a car. But it, it had to be... I didn't think they cared about the borders. It had... <laughs> right? That's a fact. So it had to be a certified import because it was still... Even though I'm not using it commercially, it's a commercial vehicle because of the weight. Yeah. Kind of like the CDL thing. It's yeah. commercial vehicle because of the weight. So I go back and I'm like, get back to Canada. And they're like, well, why did the USA turn you around if you're an American citizen? And they're like, we may need to deport you back to the USA. And now they're like... If this what so I had to go sit in like an immigration office. You're stuck it, in between. Yeah, I was like stuck in between. They're like, well, if you have to go back, you're gonna have to get the truck towed away from here. I'm what like, state were you trying to drive into? Michigan. Michigan. And apparently, the one I went through is like, if you're trying to do anything other than haul goods, it's like no go zone. Because I was gonna say you could have been like in you or like out in the west more. Yeah. Or something. There's like a couple border crossings. If you're doing anything other than, if you're importing cars, literally anything that you. No go zones. Like they will give you the hardest time, and this was one of them. Hmm. The border crossing guy was super chill, but it was just it's just no go. So got a hold of this company, and they got me all the right paperwork. Like the next morning, thank goodness. And I drove another three hours north into Canada, further north, and crossed at another border, like basically up there where side by side blog guys More are. Like New York area, or no, it was like on the west side, so yeah, like going into Michigan, oh, further Michigan. north into the Michigan. Up into like that top side that's not yeah. part of the glove. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, the UP. You didn't go on the UP though, did you? Mm -mm. That's the top. That would have. Oh, know. yeah, that weird spot up and there. And I was like, I'm like, here's my paperwork. Please don't deny me. <laughs> like, let me in. And they're like, you're good to go. We got to do a VIN inspection. So I go in there and they like did a VIN inspection on us. Like, see you later. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> After what I just went through, yeah. So you just I've driven to to 500 it. miles, yeah, like we added also to my trip. Got hooked up with a, a guy to help you through. Yeah, it the too, broker. Right? Then you you did some stuff with him We've recently. Done, we just shipped a skid steer to so Canada using the same broker that Bruce used. It's literally all about knowing the right people because these huge brokerage companies want to like take four days. They want to make you a customer. Do all this. We this this guy. I like called around and they said, oh, call this guy, call this like buddy kind of thing. I ended up calling a semi dealership in Canada that ships to the U.S. Mm -hmm. and I like, call this guy. So I called him and like an hour I had everything I needed. Hmm. And it was just like, it was like almost too easy at that point. I wonder which way is harder to get things into Canada or get things out of Canada. I think it's going into Canada. They're okay as long as you're paying all these taxes and fees. You know, yeah. they're very Canada's like, emission tax heavy. Like importing things a little bit more lax. So hmm. there's Scania's. There's a lot of other European vehicles in Canada because they have a 15 year old, not a 25 year old. Oh, uh, okay. 
What time? How much time we at? No, you're good. We over good. Okay. No. Yeah, plenty of time. So, my buddy was just my buddy was just doing this in Canada where he went to film an event. Mm. So he's making money. Yeah. Uh, and he had oh, to get your taxes. Yeah. He had to um, give a deposit of the exact amount of camera gear that he had in cash to Canada so that they knew he wasn't selling it there to make money. So he had to leave Canada with a They're deposit picky. of like tens of thousands of dollars. And I was like, man, that's like insane. Like you're like if you're a small company that has just like a bunch of camera gear, you can't swing it. Yeah, yeah. Some of these camera guys too are like a cash poor, but they have a lot of expensive cameras, don't exactly. they? Exactly. Like their even, whole life. Like a lot of people are like that with a lot of businesses. I'm like, yeah. how do you manage to just have the equivalent value of all of your belongings in cash? I'm assuming you could probably like you could kind of a brokerage they, they, or something might would help, but yeah, that's not doesn't make it easy at all. Well, most but when guys you're going to make know. money there with it, yeah. is the problem. But yeah. how do you, how does the border patrol know a twenty thousand dollar camera from a two thousand dollar camera though? You know? Well, when I pulled, mm -hmm. that's another thing. Like when I pulled through the border at the first time, and the guy's like, "Well, what year is this?" I'm like, "A ninety seven. He's like, "No, it's not." I'm like, "Yeah, it is." It says right here on the title and paperwork I've got here. He's like, "This thing looks way too nice to be a 97." I'm like, "Dude, it's just didn't buy it." <laughs> well, like an American 1997 yeah. truck is roached usually, and it just is this weird looking vehicle to begin with. Yeah, they have no idea what it is. If They're he like, sees like, did you also blow through the ag stop when you come into Florida? Always, every time. Yeah. Every time. That's another thing about no getting content. <laughs> I don't stop at any weight stations. I mean, I'm never overweight. Yeah, but like, I purposely. Don't stop just striving for content. You know, pin the table. Just striving for content because if we get a take a weight ticket, for me, I'm not for hire, so I don't have a yeah. motor vehicle record. So if I get a ticket, you just pay it. It doesn't go on your license. It's just a weight ticket. But you're also always pulling whatever you're pulling with a way too big of a truck. You know, so you're pulling a motorhome with a semi truck or a fifth wheel with yeah. a semi truck. But so the ag stops whatever. in Florida, yeah, everybody knows to just drive through them. You see somebody stopping at the ag stop, you're like, what are you? I've doing? gotten pulled over before, and they're like, "You missed the ag stop." I'm like, "Yeah, and? come on, dude. What do you mean? Like, I ain't got no like, vegetables." Midnight, man, what do you think? <laughs> I've pulled through maybe twice at an ag stop ever, and they just like. But they don't even give me time to stop. Hide the corn, hide the beans. <laughs> <laughs> it's all put them in the tool boxes. Yeah, yeah. And there's even like, I guess all of the into Florida they have ag stops, but then they're like pretty far into Florida, and you you can miss them pretty easily. Yeah, uh, yeah. The know. wait stations and all that. But now like wait stations, you don't even have to pull in anymore. So like if you're in the far right lane, traveling almost, it's getting to, it's going all over the country now. There's scales built into the highway. Mm -hmm. So and you bump over it, it weighs you. And if it's, like, close to being overweight, they'll tell you to pull in and they'll do an accurate yeah. weight. They just know right away. Yeah, they direct you in, don't they? But yeah. some of them have a safe pass. Like, some of the trucking companies, have I think, a have a pre-pass, yeah. Hmm. So, but, yeah, it's above our pay grade. We were talking about Craigslist before, and I, I don't think I told this story on here, but my last Craigslist experience was because you can't do livestock on Facebook. Like, firearms yeah. and livestock yeah, aren't yeah. allowed on Facebook. So I had two roosters I had to get rid of. So I had Florida to stuff. find a guy that would take two roosters, which aren't very desirable. Yeah. I was like, I guess They're I'm a nightmare. Just, yeah, I'm like, I guess I'll just have to kill these roosters. Like, I'm yeah. not just leaving them in my backyard. <laughs> Genocide. So, yeah, so I found this, like, crazy dude on Craigslist, and I get there, and we get into a neighborhood, and he's like, oh, yeah, it's back through here. And, like, I follow him back through, like... Could be getting murdered. Yeah, 100%. I follow him back through his house in this neighborhood, and, like, it... His backyard just opens up to like what I can only imagine is the county property, but he just has like <laughs> everything. Like there. you just walk through these trails, and he's got like different like livestock areas and stuff. I'm like, there's no shot. This is this dude's <laughs> property. There's like a storm drain and stuff. That's like a big storm drain and everything. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this dude just claimed this in this neighborhood. Yeah. And I'm like, who's gonna stop him? So I get there, and he's like, oh, you're from like Bradenton. I saw. I'm like, yeah. He's like. You know, J.H. Diesel? Oh, God. <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, I hate that guy. <laughs> I was like, Me too. I was like, perfect. All of us do, man. And he's like, I knew him 10 years ago. I was like, wait, you knew this guy 10 years ago, and that's the first like, person you bring up to me that you hate him? <laughs> Talking about fighting person. him. He's for probably on, the, on his list from high school. He's like, people not to, not to knock off. Yeah, I should have been like, no, nah, dude, he's dead, man. You're fine. <laughs> You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to go kill him. Mm. He's already gone. But And then it turns out the guy's the Tiger King or whatever, you know. <laughs> He's the Chicken King. That's yeah. how it felt, man. Like, we get out there, and, like, he throws him into this, like, cage with, like, a ton of other roosters. I'm like, all right, man, see you. Well, them guys can always just wrestle them. Have you ever seen them? They'll just grab a rooster. I wouldn't go and, I, you know, they 
They just don't they care. Terror, they, they're nuts. Yeah. yeah. But these guys just grab them and, yeah, Throw this thing's no problem. I've had a, we had one that always would, you know, fight the dogs, right? It was just <laughs> floating around. I yeah. don't know whose rooster it was, but it would float around. I would have people come look at equipment. Eventually, this dude, I was, I was just saying, I hate this rooster. It's always standing at the back door waiting for you to come outside. It's always trying to fight the kids or the dog or whatever. And I put a trap out to catch the rooster. I caught the neighbor's dog. And it was <laughs> just yapping all night. Just in this trap, How right? Big of a trap did you use? Just a trap. Like, a, you know, it was, I don't know if it was for a rooster. It definitely wasn't for a dog. But the dog's in it. And it's just yapping all night. Well, anyway, eventually, this guy come to buy a machine. And I'm like, this rooster is a nightmare. He's like, you want to get rid of that rooster? <laughs> I'm like, you can have that rooster. He just grabbed it like one hand, Throw threw it in the back of his truck or whatever. Drove away. Gone. Gone. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, the Thanks roosters are. Rooster removal service. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't think anybody would take a rooster because why would you want a rooster? You mm. don't want fertile eggs. Yeah, like, yeah. You want non, non-fertile yeah. eggs. I mean, maybe they. How did you end chickens. up with the roosters? That's the question. Because I got chicks. I got a bunch oh, of chicks. Right, right, Two of them right. ended up being roosters, so I had to get rid of them. And the my wife mo- didn't want me to kill them. My mother-in-law's got one. She's wanted to get rid of. I'm like, we'll just take it home and cook it one night and bring her some chicken over. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> she would disown me though. You don't even eat the roosters. I don't do know. I don't know. My grand granny used to just go chalk them, chalk the. Yeah. She'd cook up whatever, so. James had one. He told me he just ran it over. (laughs) (laughs) He was like, it was pissing off my wife, so I just backed over it. I was like, I guess that works. (laughs) Gosh. It makes sense. So your old truck is in Australia, right? The gold truck, yeah, Yeah. the gold rush. So that was Well, it wasn't gold when I knew it. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a whole different one. So that truck, um, the guy watched my videos from the original drag truck. And he's like, hey, can you build me one similar to it? I'm like, yeah. Of course. I mean, I kind of went at it uh, amateur. I wasn't your top drag truck builder, but I kind of built mine and went fast. So I built that one. It went 880 here. That's probably been five years ago, four four years ago now at least. Yeah, 880 four, five, was spicy on that. Thing. 880 in the quarter. I don't remember what the speed was, but it got down. And um, we shipped it to Australia. He ended up wanting a bigger engine because he wanted to go faster. And I just seen recently that the truck went like nine flat or eight ninety or something like. But since it went over there, like they changed the transmission and they did switch it all to Motec because Motec's available. I think it's in Australia, right? Motec, I think. Um, it's kind of all over the place. It's more, Haltech it's more there. Okay, Australia, maybe it's Haltech. I think it's Haltech. Yeah. So they converted it to Haltech, which is like it was the first Cummins ever on that. And they finally, the guy that bought the truck and owns it. He's like his insurance for his businesses won't even let him drive it, because he's self worth or something net yeah. worth. So he's got a driver. So they just ran it. But my drag truck, I ended up sent to who's the fab shop that we all used to use. They're still there. They're good people. Yeah, but, um, uh, Profab. Profab. So I had it four linked and a cage done, and I ended up just getting rid of the truck. I got it. It got up done, and I was like, I don't know if this is the direction I want to go because it was going to be like. Anything else, tens of thousands of dollars to make it yeah. competitive because things happen. Cha- things change within a year in the racing. It's a lot Crazy. to maintain a race vehicle. And for content wise, mm-hmm. it probably isn't it doesn't your make best sense. use of money. No. So I sold it to a guy and it sat in his garage and he sold it to another guy and it went to UCC, blew up on the dyno. <laughs> <laughs> Split itself right down and, the middle. And then that guy like sold it with no engine and now it's back here in Florida somewhere. <laughs> Oh, okay. and it's like a battleship gray color. My favorite memory of that truck, maybe maybe it's rude to say favorite, <laughs> was <laughs> you proposed. Oh goodness, yeah. At the time, yep. To the person you're not with anymore, but yeah. you proposed, and I have this thing where anytime anybody's ever proposed and then went to make a pass. It's not a good pass. Yeah. Oh, Every time I've ever right, seen now it. I so, this, yeah. so Bruce proposes me and Garrett film and we're on the starting line. He gets in his truck and he, he you didn't make that many passes in it, but you get I up made on like the one hit and then I hit another hit. Yeah. Yeah. You get up on the converter and you're just like on the converter. It's just getting hot trying to build boost. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh man. I'm like bumping the nitrous because I had a huge turbo on it. Yeah. We're like, oh man, this isn't looking good. Like me and Garrett are kind of like yeah. looking at each other. He's still on the brake. He's still on the brake. And then you go and it's going and then like we just see fire out the exhaust. Turbo blew up. You blew, you shot the 
uh, the cold sides yeah. out of the turbo, <laughs> the hot side and the cold side, and then you also balloon the converter. Yeah. So you torched like the trans and converter. Everything. <laughs> I like pulled off the track, it's pouring transmission fluid. I think Garrett drove down there. And, it was like, stopped at the top end. It started to run away a little bit too because it was just pumping oil in the intake. Yeah. And diesels will run on anything. Yeah, especially a Cummins. It'll, yeah. And it'll run with a rod outside. And I think. Y'all were posting for 1320 video at the time, I think, still running their Instagram. Yeah. Like, here's this compressor wheel someone found on the track. Yep, just a hot compressor wheel. It, <laughs> it was, was still hot at the booth, I remember. I've told everybody this, though. Like, if you propose right before you're going to make you a pass. don't blow it up. No, it's going to be a bad pass. <laughs> oh, Nobody, yeah. I've never seen anybody make a successful pass after a proposed starting yeah. line proposal. Because I've seen it before. I've, I've been... I've been in the water box mm -hmm. when a starting line proposal happens, and I'm like suited up, cars running, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> like guys out of his car. You're just melting. Yeah, I'm just You're like, sweating. come on, you could have told me I was right behind you. <laughs> but then they, you know, go break the trans or something. It's it's without fail. Yeah, it's kind of normal. Yeah, we've come a long way since then. I mean, like the flatty, but flat nasty before it was a mega truck. Like, I. Hands down, the OG wall tapper. Yes. No one can claim that trophy. I don't think anybody's trying to. <laughs> <laughs> no one's trying to get that trophy from you. You got like, it. Like, that was like, yeah. Like Early burnout stuff where it was like, nobody had a burnout car. No. It Everybody was like, just had cars that they were willing to, to put destroy. in the burnout. They are willing to destroy is yes. the word. You hit the walls. You catch on fire. Or JH's brakes on the back of his old, like, Shop nice trucks burning down, like yep. brakes catching on fire. Because you would just use anything and blow it up mostly. Or like people would take their like nice car in there and then like hit the wall and they'd Destroy be like, Destroy it. How bad does it look? I'm like, Well, <laughs> it's done. The door won't open. <laughs> so I would say the frame's probably bent. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was, so it sad. Yeah, that was good times. I've got a couple of the. It's like back then, if you like gave it your all, no matter what it was, you had a chance of winning like the burnout contest. Yeah. So I've got a couple. Well, half the cars. One, one, and a third place. But now, like to go out and like try to take a win is like, you got to be like, money spent, well into it, ready to just give it everything. Well, did you see the Australian burnout car, Kyle? Yeah, I was there. He, I talked to him a little bit. Like he won that without even question. Not even. It was. He was already won before he went out there. Yeah. That car did such a better burnout than every other car. It kind of just put everybody on the trailer <laughs> immediately. Yeah. And he's leaving it here. Yeah, it's still so here. So that thing's here to like, to just destroy everything for who knows how long. It's hard to compete with that. Hard to compete with that. But burnout cars and diesel doesn't usually go well together. <laughs> no. To begin with. Yeah. EGTs get spicy. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna figure out how to make it happen. Yeah. We're we're moving along the timeline pretty good here. I think somewhere in there we all went to PRI. Mm-hmm. That was a good time. Yeah. PRI's fun. Everybody always gets sick and is dying on the way home. Yeah. Jay. Yeah. I think he brought ethanol and people were trying. He was drinking some of his own ethanol. Yep. To show us he could do it. Jay has been on here. He is still as one of the best. Podcast. I haven't ever. heard his. I've got to listen to it. It's it, he he's just a talks a lot man. about EPA stuff, and yeah. he's so far into that world. It's like that is mind blowing. Hole. And you're like, wait, this crazy cool guy Jay, and then he's just like a farmer that is like front Making lines race fighting gas. EPA. Yeah. Also, because the farming community and like the oh, there's been big lawsuits, hasn't there, with the John Deere stuff, the right to repair and stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the emissions, like the people deleting tractors, they buy software from Eastern Europe. Delete their tractors or delete their stuff. That's going to be a big thing too. Deleting farm equipment, construction equipment. It's just such a you got to walk a. You know we don't oh, mess with anything deleted really because I just don't want to be on the hook for anything. Even though it's all used stuff, I, I just don't know. You know. Well, in some states, I've seen people like try to sell a truck that's deleted, and they'll confiscate it and crush it. That's like in New bit, York, I think they fun. confiscated California. One. You can't even. Don't even go there. Yeah. yeah, California now. You can't enter the state with an older truck other than it mm -hmm. past a certain age. So have commercial vehicles that they got to be a certain age, or and the, then also you can't the, even register it. I seen where they hmm. were using big D nine and you know D eight D nine cat dozers, which are millions of dollars, and the old ones are better usually because they're simpler, easy to work on. There gets a point where they have to send them into cat to get a newer engine to pen. put a moderner engine and add emissions to it. And the whole point of these older machines is because they don't have them reliable. Yeah. Now they're retrofitting emissions onto old equipment. It's like 
They've really California's. That's yeah, crazy to have something retrofitted onto there. Usually a new engine and emissions going it. Yeah. From Even, what I've seen. And like the problem is, you know, I talked to Garrett about this, and because he's got that big, brand new whatever or international freight loader. Total, freight yeah, it's a freight loader. Total. 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 Sixteen in this, a sixteen liter diesel. And yep. that's one of those deals where you know he was going to buy that, and people are, like, oh, you got to get an older one pre emissions, and he's like, I don't want an old. Pretty Over, mission one, yeah. like I want like a new nice that one. That thing's got like lane keep assist and everything. Yeah, and it's great. And like you know, everybody's saying like you got to get an old one. Like at some point, yeah, the old so ones old, that can't be. You're like mm-hmm. the build quality is shit on the actual living quarters of them. Yeah, yeah. everything's old now, dude. And you got a television that literally looks like it's. <laughs> some of them have televisions that you know. Yeah, like a big they deep look, dish. They, one. Look, <laughs> they look forty years old, even though they're only fifteen years old. Yeah, know? and like you know, people that lived in those, they're, they're not like something you want to spend much time <laughs> yeah, inside. Yeah, exactly. People freaking lived in those things. But the newest ones you've seen them now are just unbelievable. Mind blowing the technology. Yeah. In newer RVs. Yeah, and they're you know. But the emissions are getting dollars. in the heavy duty world. They're they're nailing it down. Like the trucks too. The ninety percent like. I say percentages all the time, but if you're having like emission issues, it's because you had something come up on your dash that told you to do something and you didn't. Hmm. So if you like bypass it and just ignore it and ignore it, same with equipment. And It'll a lot s- of contamination issues. Bad That's fuel, what people bad don't People, you know, people still think, I don't know how this happens. People still think the def goes in the diesel. Like they're putting it <laughs> yeah. in the diesel. That's a and lot that of ruins problems. it like that. I would imagine. The oh, they put system. diesel in the def or whatever. It's like uh, a lot of times on the machines, it's obviously not the brightest when they do have like diesel cap on this side, def cap on that side. And even though they're different colors, people are not thinking and they fill the def up with diesel or whatever. But Well, that's why like my GMC, you have to fill the def under the under hood. The hood. Oh, that's yeah. so annoying. It is very annoying. I mean, a funny story. I knew a guy that. You know, everyone's heard of the yeah, stories of people up. putting... <laughs> Hold your bucket. Everyone's heard the stories of people putting diesel in a, in a gas or gas in diesel or whatever. I knew a guy that had a... His dad had like a 2500. So like this younger kid was driving his dad's truck. He thought, heavy duty truck, they're all diesel. They're not. You know, you get a 2500 or a 3500, that's gas. Yeah. So he pulls up the pump. He gets the nozzle, which is way... The diesel one's big. <laughs> And he's like, it doesn't fit in the in the gas tank. And he's oh, like, ah, this. He obviously wasn't thinking something's not right. He was like, ah, it's weird. He's like holding it up to it. It's not in it, you know. It's like up to it. And he's getting a little bit in, and eventually gets enough in it where it like, it's good to go. And he and it's like he went through all that and didn't once click <laughs> that it wasn't something's meant to right. go. Oh, that's a the tough emissions. break. I had a buddy that did a similar thing. He worked on like you know a dock where they had like 70 foot you know yachts mm-hmm. and he was the fuel guy oh gas and diesel oh, yeah that's a big boo. 500 gallons <laughs> of the wrong oh, fuel <laughs> that's and a he put bad diesel day. in a gas or he put gas in a diesel i don't remember which way and it was all, but either way it was it's was all bad. wasted there's no like pulling it out and it's putting it back too, in the tank no, yeah. yeah it's mixed and it's, it's 500 gallons like because you know they're they take a lot. hundred foot yachts. Yeah. They, they take, a, take lot. a lot of fuel. They take thousands of gallons. And like those yeah. also, if you do run it and hurt that motor, hurt the engine, oh, they have so to that dry dock engines. it, cut the, they have to yeah. cut it out. You know how big they are, yeah. Yeah, they, the almost out. all of they them. They got big cat diesels or big MAN, MAN diesels. They put uh, Scania engines in a lot yeah. of boats now. A I had a buddy that, marine engines. he blew up this dude's boat. He was a captain because my brother's a hundred ton captain's license. Wow. Also, so he's around a lot of that boat stuff and, you know, Buddy of his ran the boat way too hard, you know, just red line for mm, too long. Wow. 10, 20 minutes. And you, at some point, you have to stop doing that. Yeah, yeah. And it Reading. was like a $75,000 just to like get the motor out before they even fixed it because dry dock, you have to cut the hull. Wow. And then you have to repair the hull. So you don't want to. That's insane. Break Boats your Viking are like motor. aeroplanes, they're just maintenance heavy and then they, they labor rates sometimes, even. Yeah. 200 an hour some places or now. more 200 or more, hours, yeah. whatever. it's interesting because you could be a mechanic and you know, what you work on could really leverage your skills pretty good because like the boat mechanic could yeah. make so much more than just like that Auto regular mechanic, automotive yeah. mechanic and it's sometimes easy, you know it can be easier or it's just all about yeah. picking what you want to do could be just the same easy just yeah way more money way more money i do feel like some of the places like the shop's charging 200 an hour. A lot of times the mechanic's probably getting a bit disgruntled because he's getting 30, you know, yeah. whatever. But 
Maybe. For the most part, if you're skilled enough labor, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Flat rate pay and stuff and like that. And you can that. also negotiate, obviously, get certain amounts. But, but like you... you were saying with the, um, you know, people ignore like a warning sign during COVID, a lot of those parts were back ordered. A lot. So yeah. what do you do if you're that guy that has a truck payment this month? Your truck has a, you know, check. Or you can't get. Whatever. Chips, all the microchips. Stupid all light that. on that you can't get. And you're like, well, it's still drivable. Yeah, I won't deny that. There was definitely a lot of emissions issues during that time frame with, like, the microchips and computers that controlled all the emissions and stuff. Or even, like, like a sensor or something that you couldn't yeah, get. And lots then you're of like, sensors weren't available. You kind of end up in this spot where you got to make your payment. And that's but, where it ran into a lot of guys deleting highway trucks, which is a big, big no-no. Like, if you're hauling for hire and stuff like that. Because... It's not like the DOT is out hunting these guys down. Yeah. But if it's, like, blatantly obvious, like, you have this brand-new truck blowing black smoke, they're going to be like, why isn't this hooked up? Yeah, I wonder how so, much of that is, like, somebody snitching versus... There's a lot of snitches. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people, most of the people getting caught doing stuff is snitches, but maybe I'm just a bit... That's you know, my biggest problem with, like... YouTube. Yeah. With YouTube and stuff like self, that. Is like Self-snitching. Well, yeah. In a way. <laughs> well, that and, like... A lot of you, you undervalue, I think, some of our viewers. Like, they're paying a lot more attention to the video than even, I think, sometimes mm -hmm. we are when we're, like, filming things. Yeah. And they notice a lot. There's viewers out there that know your channel and your videos better well, than you your, do. I, I Just went recently. to rent a piece of equipment. A guy was down here. Um, uh, his sister bought a small piece of property. His, he flew down for Christmas break and used off some of his uh, used up some of his time to clear her piece of property. They rented a piece of equipment. This guy's from middle of nowhere, Minnesota, <laughs> and he's older. He's about sixty, so you know older people watching YouTube now. Yeah, and a lot. I'm dealing with this guy, and he's a real nice dude. And I'm went to pick it up and loaded it up, and he's like, "Thanks a lot, thanks for everything." And the last minute, he kind of just was like. You know that Bruce Wilson guy, don't you? I said, maybe. That's a, <laughs> Depends. Like, that's a weird assumption for you to make. You know, I, I, what have I ever, never mentioned anything to do with anything? And he's like, yeah, I'm just a stalker. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and he's like, nah, I just, I've seen you on his YouTube. Now, I'm not in Bruce's videos, right? Like I'm maybe not like, two or three I'm not a groupie or, or, or whatever. I'd, minutes, second. Perp, I'd, I'd rather not be in it, you know what I mean? I'm here now, obviously, but. Yeah, got I'm, a couple I'm, warrants I'm, trying to hide from the <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like, I'm like, I don't want to be his in it. His card's expiring. I, I don't want to attract any attention well, to You guys me. are married, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, eventually, he must have just seen me in the background or one of the videos. Obviously, I stick out like a sore thumb, you know, sometimes, but. That guy must have been really paying attention. Yeah. yeah. And he's 60 he years every old. Every other day or something. 60 years old days. from middle of nowhere, Minnesota. So, yeah, they pay attention to a, a lot more than we think. We definitely discount that. Well, like, you might be like me, too, where I say this a lot where people, like, some of the fans know the videos better than you do. You've probably filmed something and not watched it back. And upload how much time? Yeah, you I have definitely to spend, I do yeah. that a lot. So like, like whenever, where you just kind of piece clips together and you know what was in the clip, so you can just kind of cut it off mm -hmm. in a spot. So you because just like piece if it you in. watch a thirty minute video you made front to back, you're 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 gonna spend like two and a half three hours yeah. editing it. And, and you know it's so much time. So like when I'm filming, like if my cameraman's filming, like I'll watch almost everything. But he's gotten good. He knows when to start and stop without me saying anything. Like we've we're working really well. You give him the eye or whatever. I'm like. You know, I, like, do something. I don't even know what he picks up on anymore. He just knows. Once but, you start getting quick at editing, too, you can see where there's a dip in audio where you're yeah. like, nothing was there. Yeah. And for, like, me, whenever I'm, like, filming, like, if we're just, it's just me filming what I'm doing, I, I purposely stop and start at perfect times. And I know, I remember what I said, so I don't have to watch. You edit the there. video as you're filming it, basically. Yeah, so you, exactly. You don't just film, like, 10 hours and of then, footage and you're uh, like, well, this needs to be something in there. Yeah. And it's always, wouldn't it be best to just, like, try to not... This is the problem I would have. I'm a little bit OCD. I'd be wanting to redo it all. Bruce just rolls with it, you know, and, and mm -hmm. people probably actually like that better because you, you know. More, I call it, like, more relatable. People, it's not, like, Yeah, you're not, like, it's trying not to get every bit of content, like, perfect. You just roll them with it and try to not film, like you said, not film a lot and then clip pieces out. Just film what almost what you need and get used mm -hmm. to that. I don't know. But same Some thing. people... There's a thing you fall in love with the footage a little bit in the clips, and you won't don't want to cut it out, and then you end up with these too long of videos that a lot Boring. of it should have been cut out. Mm -hmm. That's what 
I had I came to Jesus moment like literally earlier this week. So we haven't we don't ever go more than like two days without posting. I went like five or six and I was just like filming a video and I'm like, man, I don't even this is boring just filming it. I'm like, what am I doing? And I'm like, it's like I feel like we've all come into like a dry spell like filming on something and I'm like I'm sure a lot of people have. I was like, oh my gosh. And like my quick fix is like We'll just go buy something and have fresh content. <laughs> and then I'm like, then I have all this stuff. <coughs> People ask about it constantly. Yeah. Like, what's up with that? Like, oh, well, we got a lot of good views at it really quick. And then it's, they don't it's forget over. about anything either, do they? <laughs> no, they just never like, forget. So now, like, whenever I sell something, it just like quietly disappears. And like, only a sl- if I, when I made videos, made a video, like, okay, we sold this. And it's like, people got upset. So now it's just like, if it's something that I feel like isn't going to work anymore, just, just, just go. Yeah. So if it doesn't come back, it's gone. <laughs> quick, quick to buy or slow to buy, quick to sell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like slow to add things, but then quick to get rid of them if they're not working. So which yeah, is that, a good part of it. That's been the, trying to like roll into different stuff. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe slowing down to like one or two videos a week and a just better quality, producing a better quality video with more like, like I feel like if a thirty minute clip. 30 minute video, I should have like 100 scenes at least or something, you know, like audience retention to get it to grow. And obviously that's better for the algorithm. But yeah, it's just like I'm wanting to change up my direction. That's like with the second channel or starting. So, but yeah, my tr- I want to go over my trip to Europe. This has been like life yeah, change, I was life curious changing about that. for me. So I got my passport to go pick up the Scania in Canada. And that was mm-hmm. like end of November. First time I ever left the country. Oh, for... that's so stupid. I forgot you had to get a passport yeah. just to go to Canada. <laughs> so I got that. And then I'm like, got the, the Scania. And this is like the red the red Scania before I got the white one. Opened up so many doors with people from all over the world. It's been crazy. And this one company in predic- per- particular, I'm learning to speak, not Finnish, but pronounce Finnish words. So mm-hmm. Yuli Voimala is the name of this company. And they're in Ulu, Finland. It's a lot to like stop speaking English and pronounce something in Finnish. Yeah. It's like pronouncing Bruce Finland. <laughs> in Finland. It's, it's so this company, Yuli Voimala in Finland, really awesome group of dudes. Like, and like their work ethic is crazy there compared to America, but another time for that. You should stop maybe bagging on everyone in America, all the trucks. <laughs> I know. I, I was like bagging on everything American when I was there because I'm like, they're like eons ahead of us on like almost everything on certain yeah. stuff. Yeah. Stuff. And, yeah, this guy's from there, so, you know. He's Finnish. Yeah. And, um. How many wars have they won? <laughs> <laughs> so, they, uh, I, like, hit up, like, four or five different, like, European truck comp, like, parts manufacturers for this truck. I'm, like, wanting to do injectors, you know, perform, mm-hmm. make it more power. Mm-hmm. And course, no one would hit me back. Yeah. No one would hit me back. And I came, I found Yuli Voimala, and I was, like, found him on Instagram. I was, like, okay. When I hit message, I already had a message from them, but it got lost. I was like, oh, sweet. Nice. So they're like, hey, we'll set you up with some parts. So we got some injectors from them and the computer and all this stuff and built a relationship with them. And they're like an awesome group of dudes. They're like, well, you should come visit. And I was like, I was like okay. And I booked my flight like right then. Went over um, like the second week of December, spent a week there. And in the time frame of me saying I'm going to, like I announced it like two weeks before I went that I was going to Finland Someone from Scania headquarters reached out to me, and he's like, his name's Matthias. He's like one of the global sales managers, so pretty up there. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> and I was like, no way. I was like, this ain't. And he's like, can we can we, can we uh, do a call right now, a video call? I was like, yeah. So we got on a video call, and he's like, when do you come? And I was like, he's like, uh, he's like, when do you come? And I was like, you know, in two weeks. He's like, uh, let me get back to you tomorrow. So. Like, last minute, he planned, like, this whole day, like, adventure. Maybe it was, like, you weren't with me. That's right. So, like, I interrupted my trip to Finland. Had uh, the guy I was going to meet, his name is Ville. Ville. It's V-I-L-L-E. In? In Finland. In Finland. So he then Ville. he then flew over to Sweden and spent the day with me at the Scania factory. Oh, so that was probably cool for him, too. Yeah, yeah. he was, like, all about it. He's like, dude, <laughs> yeah. this is awesome. He's like, my local Scania dealer is going to be so pissed because he's a repair <laughs> shop near the... <laughs> A Scania dealer, but not Scania dealer. So they, like, gave us the grand tour. We showed up there. They took us. We got to see their R&D facility. You can't talk or go over anything there. But it was, like, eye-opening to, like, a manufacturer standpoint of, like, mm-hmm. I mean, like. Do they have similar emission crazy. laws there? They're tighter. 
tighter. They so have Euro still six there. and stuff. Yes, they call it they call it Ad Blue or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. All the Volkswagens have. But like that. here, you could have like older non-emission trucks on the road. There, you can't have non-emission trucks on the road if they're unless they're for farm use. There's like certain mm-hmm. laws, but if it's for like traveling between countries and even like you can't go into London unless you have like all these different emissions and different permits and oh there's a, there's a carbon tax so yeah there's like to go into big cities over there at least in london if you have say a car like what we're in now or or a suv mm-hmm. uh or, or a truck there's a you're paying every day going in there a lot 30 or 40 mm. just yeah. to go in in finland they have like a lot of electric cars a lot like they've all the big diesel trucks, you know, they're higher emissions, they're cleaner, better running vehicles, yeah. honestly. But like in Finland, there's no like three quarter ton pickups. There's zero anything like that. They don't have any supercars. Like, he, the, yeah, but it's also like it's the, Baltic over there, isn't it? So like every it's always cold. Scandinavia is oh, frozen. You don't have supercars really. Yeah. So they do have like he Vila had a he has like some kind of a Porsche, really nice car, but it's fully electric. Mm-hmm. And he said he'd love it's to have Taycan, like Taycan, yeah, yeah love to have nicer cars, but they pay a crazy tax. It's kind of like that's a, terrible. Just to own one mm-hmm. and have it registered it shouldn't really be. You know. So went to Scania. I, I got toured the factories. They don't build the cabs there. They get come in from another factory. So they but they're not like Chris, like a few hours away. But they like forging process. Like they've got their own like it's insane. So they build an engine blocks and stuff. At they their pour. Own? They pour their own casts. Wow! Oh, wow! Okay. Like so, it goes all the way down to, like the cranks. <laughs> seems like they build the best vehicles there. It's insane. Like yeah, like your, your Saabs and Volvos. Got and to go through the engine factory. Eggs are built there. Everything, and then they set me up. We got to go on the Scania test track, and I got to drive like almost every <laughs> truck they had. Road. It was so awesome. Are they? Are the frames, um, like, stainless or anything? Isn't that what Prevost does? They use, like, mm. badass stainless frames? I'm not sure. Stuff. They're all steel, pretty much. But their their paint and coatings are way more meticulous and better mm. than... Yeah, what they, they don't paint, paint over like, every little bit yeah, of Yeah, like, my brand new Peterbilt's, like, they put everything on it but the engine transmission and the cab. So they run all the hoses, everything, and then they then just paint. paint over everything. Like, all the wires, all the modules, airlines, nice. painted blue. There, the, 90s cars. the frame gets painted by itself. The rear ends get painted separately, and, and then they, they wire and hose everything. So it's like, is I, it like it's a like, lot more expensive. No, it's like the same or less. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And I'm not. It's like not trying to bag on American. You definitely stuff, bag on American know, stuff, Bruce. Hard. I bag on American trucks. It's okay, hard. but it's just it. like it's hard to pat discount. It's your bread and butter, bro. It's your bread it's and so butter. hard to discount. Yeah, I mean the they they have more craftsmanship. It sounds like for Key. sure. Like they actually keyword. care a lot more about. And you know, some of the obviously the cost of living might be different, but I think the average in, in the UK at least, the average pay and the average salary is like three thousand euros. Not even in some places in in the UK, you know, people work. Taxes are way higher in Finland. It's forty eight percent income tax. Oh. But they don't have. Oof. They have a lot less other taxes though. They don't have income tax. Well, I would hope. Or not income tax. They don't have a uh, sales tax. But they have VAT, so it's like yeah. similar. It's it's, it's, tw- it's small. different system, but it's just. I mean, with YouTube, a lot of it's taxed anyways, because you can't YouTube do anything life. about that. Yeah, yeah it's kind of. You just gotta buy a semi truck a year. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta buy a bunch. Bruce of knows shit. all about writing, writing yeah. stuff off. I mean, you kind of have to with these. We're not like video game YouTubers mm-hmm. where you can just like. You know, it's almost like just printing money because it doesn't cost anything. But yeah. then they're paying so much in taxes. Though. Yeah, they, have, they, no they have no overhead, though. Yeah, they have nothing. They have like zero. <laughs> Me, I'm like broke at the end of the month because I've bought something to make content with. Well, that's like a lot like of the creators, isn't it? They're, people spend a lot to make these videos, yeah, like the Mr. Beast. There's or a lot of people that discount the amount. cost of making automotive content is like, then add like heavy duty stuff. Yeah. I've heard one YouTuber talking about it where it's like you're basically just using last month to make to make this month, month. and you're just kind of rolling like that. And which so you get a lot of people probably do. Yeah, in and their so you get into like life. Cody, like he made the initial investment, like whistling diesel. Like people are like, how can you destroy, destroy, yes. destroy? And your and money that's is a big gone. gamble, though, isn't it? It's a gamble. Yeah, like it's everything a gamble. that <laughs> to succeed in anything, I think you do have to. There's a bit of risk involved. Scared money gamble. doesn't make money. I feel like that's something I've always commended about you, Bruce. Is you're 
quick to roll into your next venture. Yeah. You're not well, like a slow moving guy where it's like <laughs> Paul's like you just do everything on a whim. Bro. On a you whim. There's no and he doesn't really hang like he's it's not a lot of faith in himself. Yeah. yeah, and also the good thing about figure it out. good thing about Bruce, I'd like to take Leaf out of his book because if something goes wrong or he does something bad or something doesn't work out, it's just like it's the past or whatever. He's not hanging around dwelling on it. It's mm-hmm. the next thing or whatever, you know, which should be, you know. The the front window is big and the rear view mirror is small. And that's really how Bruce small lives. <laughs> yeah, not, you don't need to see back there on the hurricane. No. I meant just uh, theoretically. Yeah, in life, I get yeah. that for sure. Because I've, you know, since I've known Bruce, he's had like eight different businesses. Goes for and it. And they've all seemed to be. They were all. They're all good. They're and all he good, just doesn't yeah. hesitate if you know, like the. Even the RC shop or even the tractor business, the minute it's like something's moving or shaking, he's like, yeah. I'm I'm hanging on to stuff. I'm sent, you know, whatever. I'm I'm he's doing it. I'm in it till the, I'm till in the it. dead end. Till, Don't just, wait till it drags you down with it. No, nah, do it. Drag I see something like with the tractor shop because I like had my dad's place leased Slow out down a little bit, yeah. And it started like slowing down, and Paul's like, yeah, stuff slowing. Down. I'm like, I just like fire sailed everything for like what I had in it or a little bit more, and like got mm-hmm. rid of everything. And then, like if I wouldn't have done that, I would have been. Would have took a long time. Oh, a long time, and it, like lost a lot of money. And I was like, told Dad, like, put the place up for sale because, like, when he was leasing it to me, I'm like, Get, let me lease it for a few years, and if it works out, I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, let's just just sell it. And, and it was like, I, like the right time. But he makes the decision been. on like you know on a ten like, minute. Like I was at home one night talking to Amber. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> and then the next day, everything I like dropped price on everything and just started fire sailing like everything yeah just be quick to move things and yeah that's something i've always noticed about you of course and there's like when garrett first got the track he was talking about like somebody to help work it Mm -hmm. and you came up and he was like no the problem with bruce is he'll build a new track next door (laughs) because that's the kind of guy he is and like you're not an employee yeah you're an owner of your own thing And like, you know what I mean? Like you basically like trying to tame at Bruce. some point you'd be doing your own yeah. thing. Yeah. So it was, you got to hire employees, not people that are. <laughs> you got to hire people that want to work for other people. Yeah. Exactly. Which is, there's plenty of people There's nothing wrong there. with that whatsoever. Not at all. No. There's I, a lot, lot to I be wish said. I was more like that. <laughs> there's a lot to it's be said. It's a lot not smarter mine. to be like that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to be said about being able to go home and not worry, you know, running your own business Having every the night, family life all separate night. from yeah. work and uh, yeah, we can we can talk about that for hours, no doubt. Yeah, and that's that's tough too. And I also think a lot about like leverage of the same thing, which is interesting. Like, you know, I know people with like CNC shops, mm-hmm. and we're had this long conversation with my buddy about it. I was like, you can have a CNC sh- CNC machine, and there's fifty different things you can make, and each one could pay very differently. So, yeah. like, you know, I got buddies that make car parts. Car parts do well. Yeah. But then I know people that make medical equipment. That medical do. equipment does really well. And then I know people that sell to the military. And the same CNC machine. The same block of stainless steel. Same they thing said. could make, you know, yeah. $50 or $5,000. You know, there's a you could take a block of stainless steel and you depend on what you make with it. Like you say, you could make anything down to precision needles or whatever and yeah. make so many of them and it's yeah that yeah i've seen something like that I'm yeah like, it's all like a, motivational something i've seen i heard somebody it. saying like just sell the most expensive thing to the richest person you know and who's the richest person you know the u.s government mm-hmm. so just make <laughs> especially the war machine you know if you can make something yeah. military you can you can justify a price for it you know i know people that make like lowers for ars and sell them to <laughs> you know or yeah. mps or whatever they are they sell them to governments and mm-hmm. That's probably the best profit. They don't ever have customer service, really. You just kind of <laughs> keep just, shipping them out. <laughs> yeah, they get well, used a couple of times, if any. Well, it's interesting, too, because a lot of the time they send you the design. Mm-hmm. You have the CNC machine, and they're just it. like, make this. Just print it, basically. And it's like, oh. Yeah, they okay. just print us money, <laughs> Yeah, literally. Well, with military stuff, I do think the paperwork side of it's tall, though. You know, I think they... It's easy in one way, but I think in another way, there's probably more to it than, you know, meets the eye. But there is obviously big money in it. But I think getting passed and certified to be a military contractor or whatever, and then also be a military spec, a lot of it's BS. Like when they make plane parts or helicopter parts, they have to be able to withstand like 230 times the amount that it ever will. But it's like, when do you make anything, you know, be able to handle 
way more than it'll ever need, you know. Well, but usually if somebody me. says military grade, that means it's shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, military grade? Oh, shit. Sign me up. <laughs> That's the lowest bidder right there. <laughs> yeah, that always worries me. Have you have you dealt with the EPA at all, like, personally? Because you had a diesel shop, and... I think that's one of those things, and I, like, got out of it, like, in. right when it was, like... I mean, we've all, you know, worked on a few trucks, without saying we've worked on a few trucks, if you catch the drift. But, I mean, I think I got out of it right when the hammer came down on a lot of shops, and uh, maybe they don't have my current address, <laughs> I don't know. But, I mean, yeah, I... I got out of it just like a few other businesses. I got right out of it, out of it right at the right time. Yeah, and I mean, you know plenty of people. We both do that art. I mean, Corey yeah. I've talked to quite a few times, and mm -hmm. he's in the thick of it more than anybody. Way thick. And he's like, I was like an example of like he deleted like, what is, what's the presidential car? The Yeah, the Beast. The Beast. He deleted and tuned it. Yeah, and it's his a tune. His, yeah, and he's fighting the government for what he did. His tune is on the beast that tows around, that the drives around to the president, which is crazy. And then they're still putting him in jail him for every <laughs> literally he trying has. to put him in jail. Yeah, because there's other uh, YouTuber from out west who's done some had some EPA heavy D and yeah. all them. Yeah, they paid like a eight hundred thousand dollar fine or something. Yeah, that and was huge. I did learn that the fines are not just, and I listened to his. It's based on like your income and whatever's in your bank account and a few other factors. It's not like they're trying to put, they don't want you to be put out of business. They want you to pay the fine. Yeah, of course. Cause like I mean, they, not want, paying the, the fine. they want the money. That's yeah. what it's about. It's not like, so you're all saying it's a shakedown. Yeah. Like when I was in Mexico as a kid, we got pulled yep. over by the cop and they're like, how much you got? Yep. <laughs> yeah. And my dad's like, ah, 50 bucks. And he's like, okay, cool. Fifty dollars. Yeah. That's fine. They, they just want you to pay it. They don't want to put you out of business. We funny story about that. You know, in a foreign country, you go to, I was in Thailand, and of course, again, stick out like a sore thumb. You rent a moped, and everyone's on mopeds, everyone's on bicycles, on you know, uh, mopeds on flip-flops or whatever. <laughs> you go 20 foot out of the moped place, and they're like, you pull you over, and they're like, where's your helmet? They're like, dude, there's people everywhere without helmets. All these people, no one's got a helmet. They're like, nope, helmet. And then you go, you know, pull out of there, and another half a mile down the road, it's like, where's your uh Moped, international moped license. You're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? I have no idea. You know, then, you know, there you go, another fine. You know, well, it's just, you know, it's, it's, just, it's the moped just, rental company. Oh, yeah, you're you. just getting nickel and dimed, you know, and it's just a shakedown. Happens all the time. Yeah, and if you're not with, like, a, somebody that knows, that could just be, like, screw off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because they'd be like, CB okay, cool. Media. You yeah. watch that guy? I know, and Kyle was just there with him. Yeah. Did you see some of the trucks? All that? the trucks. Yeah. Why did they have so many mirrors? <laughs> that was the one the thing Thailand I noticed. Trucks that... A lot of them run on propane. You know that? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. The in LP. Thailand, I was driving down the highway. Well, got there. You know, flew in uh, to Bangkok, and the taxi picked us up. Really cheap because everything's you know the exchange rate and whatever. Opened the back of the taxi, went to put the bag in. Huge propane tank <laughs> what, inside like, the car. Yeah. So then right behind, sure this, the, yeah, on the other side of the bumper where you support. Would, where you would get rear-ended, you know. <laughs> so then the semis have got the big torpedo bottles that are like the tall ones. Oh, you don't yeah, really yeah. see them here. They're like a skinny. We have the small fat ones and yeah, the yeah. tall fat ones, but they've got like a tall, tall, skinny one, like what an oxygen acetylene mm -hmm. bottle is. And there's like just tons of them, or you know, a dozen or two dozen behind the cab of the semi, and that's what they run on. Load, a lot of propane over there. But that's crazy. That was a while ago. I wonder if it has a lot to do with like how compressed everything is, and maybe. Well, I think it's like, easier to get. Easier to easier get, to. maybe, but I think that you get crazy miles to the gallon of propane too. Cleaner running engines. It's yeah. probably a lot something of advantages. where like the Middle East won't sell them fuel or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they have to get it from somewhere else. and The war machine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're like, sorry, no, you're not getting it. So we touched on, you were there on the first time Ruby fired up and <laughs> that thing was so bad in its first rendition. Bad from Turbo it's, Kit it's to a, the a, Trans. Garrett's welding. Garrett's welding. You and James fighting, fighting through all the wiring and everything, and like it was so high up that running lines to it was like you're just running, you're running <laughs> wires and lines through open air. Yeah, <laughs> just like <laughs> so we just had to put a turbo on this thing tonight. That's that was the whole. Yes, that was all it was. And then he went to like Adam LZ's event and immediately broke it. Yeah, and just destroyed the trans. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, and that was it. Was a back when it's still automatic. Yeah. You see, the or, problem yeah. is, like... Like, Corvette automatic, I yes. mean, yeah. 
it was the 4L65, yeah. which are bad trans. The yeah. problem is, like, none of us could make that content now and not yeah. feel like we're just half-assing it. No. Like, if you did that right now, you'd be like... Ugh. People would hate so hard. Yeah, and you wouldn't be happy with it. Like, yeah. you would be like, this isn't right. None of this yeah. is right. And even, like, me, I'd be like, uh, this is a... A this fire hazard. I don't like any of this. Like, but you're always like on the edge about you and Paul are pretty similar, I think, as far as like things got to be done right, or if you don't know what you're doing, you'll have someone else do it right. Or yeah, I try to outsource. Well, also like with my Camaro, you know, it's going 180 miles an hour. Yeah. It's nice to have things done Parachute right. Work. Yeah, yeah. Like I'll do a lot of things myself, of course, but if I'm not able to do it the right way it feels such a disservice to be going down track with knowing something's the wrong way. And it might not work out. Yeah, like if it was just like, you know, a little street car that went like tens, I'd be like, okay, it's not the end of the world, but you kind of get to this little bit more of a danger zone. Yeah, and this might lead us into the whole car thing. So I bought a Corvette when all of us were like doing the Corvette thing, like right around Ruby time frame, a C5. Yeah. And I was, like, on a whim. I think I was with you. We were at Orlando Speed World for something. And I was chilling in the art, like, I don't know what we were there for. I was just like, I was like, yeah, I want a Corvette. So I, like, found one and bought it the next day. And, like, Clearwater knew nothing about it. And then, I like, got all Texas Speed, got, every, you know, all the normal oh, NA yeah. stuff. Yep. Heads, cam, headers, all that. And uh, brought it. This was, like, when Garrett was not a tuner. <laughs> He watched Jeremy do a little bit. Yep. And I drove it. I, I think I to had it towed to the shop. It was interesting because at that time, he was really prepared to tune other people's vehicles, but, <laughs> but not he, his own. <laughs> he had no business tuning other people's vehicles. He would only tune others, though, not his own. <laughs> yeah. So we tuned it on the dyno. It made like, I don't know, like maybe 400 horses. Does that sound right? I th it's yeah, probably about that for an the other day. Yeah. And uh, it ran good enough to drive around. Then I got with Jeremy, and we tuned it back up. And that was like my entry into like cars. I was always a truck guy. You realized how easy the LS is. Easy. Yeah. And like when I got the all the parts from Texas Speed, like back in the after hours diesel days, like when I got a project started, like we're not leaving the shop until this thing is done. <laughs> I don't care if it takes two days. Yeah. We're not sleeping. Like if you go look, look up some of my older videos, like I look like death. But like the Corvette, like I pulled it in the shop. It had heads, cam, headers, everything from before I went to sleep again. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember that because I remember we were at, I think we were at PRI and I introduced you to Potac and the Texas. Yeah, yeah, Seth the and them at the time, yeah. Yep. And, you had and, Potac on here recently, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yep. and Funny he was, guy. <laughs> helped you with the heads and stuff. I, I was also just thinking about the time we made it to your shop with Garrett's Corvette and it sprung a fuel leak. Oh, yeah, like in the in fender the driveway, well. In the fender well. Pouring. <laughs> just dumping fuel out. We just drove like an hour and a half to your shop for some reason. I don't know. Maybe to pick up White Buffalo or something. Because we It may have did just some been work to film it. a clip on it, too. So, like, Maybe. we were just doing, like, a yeah, who film knows? and go back. But then, like... <sighs> You're bringing up things I don't even remember. That's, then I it, like, that. springs a leak. That was, like, just on E85. Y'all did fuel pump or something in the fender well. And, like... But also, you probably didn't realize this at the time, but we didn't have a place to work on No, vehicles. it was the driveway. So, like, or you... Y'all took it to Jeremy's old shop or something. Yeah, like and, like, going to your shop, we were like, wow. Like, he has a <laughs> shop, like, multiple <laughs> bays. 8,000 square foot shop, then. It was a lot of shop, and, like... Garrett's like, do you want to move to Tampa and start a diesel shop? <laughs> like, 50 toolboxes all yeah. snap on. I was like, gosh, dang, this guy's got a lot of debt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. I... Just paid my Snap-on bill off like six months ago. <laughs> I'm free and clear. Did you get rid of anything, or is it still all like... Somehow you know, I only have half the tools I bought originally. Nah, That's classic. how it usually goes. Yeah. Bruce I, might have been one of them guys like, can you hit my card for $20 on Friday, you know? <laughs> can you give me till tomorrow? Wait till payday. Yeah. That was a cool shop, though, that whole setup and, like, yeah. location-wise, and it had, like, a good amount of, like, parking outside, parking outside for, like, yeah. trailers and stuff, because I think we left the trailer there a few, a few times. times. Yeah. yeah. You were up in one car. What, other, what else do you remember that I don't remember? Uh, a lot stories. of you breaking stuff. Oh, yeah, always breaking stuff. Yeah. Sure. Um, terrifying when we were on your Chinese lift with White Buffalo and I was up in mm. the air. 
Like so, we were like servicing the rear end in White Buffalo, putting a trans in it. Yeah, we just, put a trans in White Buffalo on Bruce's like super sketchy Chinese thirty five hundred dollar twelve thousand pound lift. Yeah, and <laughs> this should be like a ten thousand dollar lift. And we're in a dually thirty five hundred. Oh It'll pick it up. <laughs> we put it up in the air, and he's like, "Get it up to seventy miles an hour." I'm gonna listen under it. <laughs> so I'm in there, like this, up in the lift. Waiting for it just to, to take off. I'm noise. like, what's it gonna, is it going to fall? Is this lift just going to fail? Like, yeah. And at that point, you were in like a little industrial park. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like, it was like Things a strip mall almost. A little bit, yeah. Because <laughs> you weren't doing as much. Yeah. You were trying YouTube to do was less picking of up, that. Yeah. And you didn't want like that 8,000 square foot shop. Huge as overhead. One does. Yeah, huge overhead. <laughs> so was just, that the shop in the business center? No, this is like in Dade City, like downtown. You've never seen that. It was a lot more reasonable yeah. size shop that time. Yeah. But then putting that trans in suck too. But if you have a Dodge, you know a transmission uh, or two comes out. Forty eight RFE. Sixty eight RFE. Sixty eight RFE. Forty eight RE. Yeah, forty eight RE. The sixty eight <laughs> RFE. Trash. Trash. Even like I think the, James still has problems at it. Yeah. Even the Billy badass one from Suncoast that we got because they helped us out plenty of times. Yeah. Wasn't that good, and they knew that they were like, Well, there's stock parts in there, we can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. Now they're probably better, but yeah, yeah, because we had to go to Suncoast to replace the one like overnight, mm -hmm. and then it still that was on. We went th okay, we we went from drag truck in the trailer, drove up to Suncoast, mm -hmm. and then we went to Atlanta, yes, and then yes. so the trailer made it to Pensacola. Is that Atlanta. way we flew in the plane to meet yeah, with those we, guys we and picked there. up that fake engine block for the Cummins and flew it back in the plane? Yeah, I'm putting a Cummins and a Lincoln. That's a whole other project. Ah, I just said, still I said the guy that built... No, he's done. Dude. <laughs> it's, I think it is. It's the guy that built the... You think uh, it is? The Galaxy originally. Uh, tra Travis? Travis. Yeah, I don't really know him. I just remember him dropping off that. So he's got the burnout. He's got a, uh, a Rolls-Royce burnout with a blower. Oh, is at, it that same dude? Same guy. Realize. So I was like... Oh, like Eight months ago, it was like I bought the car, pulled the engine out. I was like, this is a lot of going to take a lot of time. I'm like, and it sat. I was like, this thing's really in the way. So I called him like, will you do this? He's like, yeah. So I was like, well, come get it and let me know when it's done because <laughs> it's in my way right now. That's so. the guy that made those wheels. Yes. <laughs> those yeah. things are scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are scary so wheels. So he's like, <laughs> come and swapped a few old classic cars and Duramax swapped. So he's like, he knows how to make mm -hmm. it happen. So I'm like, just come get it. And then after we were there... We went to Hardway for the tune. Yeah, and dynoed it and everything. Yeah, yeah. dynoed it and tuned it and everything. But also, we didn't realize, like, the trans that they put in there was built for, like, Thousand, towing. Like, yeah. competition towing. Yeah. So, like, it shifted, like... So hard. <laughs> like, it shifted and, like, you'd hit your head on, like, the dash a little bit. And they just, like... I guess there was a little misconception on what we wanted, really, mm -hmm. or... Yeah, I, I don't know how it I was happened. just happy that they were, like, getting y'all a trans that wasn't fried at that point. I think Garrett might have been on the same page, and then he's like, yeah, this is a little stiff. But we didn't know if it was tuning or, like, clutches need to learn or yeah. anything, and, like, I don't know. The it, 68s were still in, like, the learning stages of performance back then, too. Now they're somewhat refined. They're still would it have shit. been Ryan that tuned it at the time? Yeah, or, hard way. or Corey yeah. would have Ryan, done the trans tuning. I Ryan don't know if tuned like everything, kinda, yeah. I don't know how they're connection was at the time and it was still a fairly new truck yeah ryan did everything on it back then yeah on his dyno and then obviously now you're back or you've opened you know you've started this other channel with a yeah, super let's, starting let's off the channel yeah this is starting exciting. off with so, a supercar oh, you're, you're 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 getting out there too quick now <laughs> oh what do you want to <laughs> tease them free story here so paul always comes by the shop Drops a few insults to keep me in check. And uh, <laughs> as one does, it's Bruce. <laughs> as a good friend does when I'm getting too far ahead of myself. And um, I was telling him, like, man, I really, I will, I've always wanted a Viper. I feel like everybody wants a Viper at some point. Yeah. And I'm like, looking, if I want to probably one, want like a second gen Viper. No, I want a fifth gen. Okay, good. Because I can't get latest, past, yeah. I can't get past buying a $60,000 nice second gen and it's a second gen. Dodge on the inside, yeah. and I'm like, man, there's no way. Yeah. Like, if I had like sixty thousand, just to, I mean, we're obviously blowing money buying supercars, but sixty thousand just to throw away. Okay, I'd, I'd buy a old clapped Viper, no matter what miles are on. It's still a overheating AC doesn't work. The only good, good one is the fifth gen, <laughs> and I'm like, so then All the rest like, are tractors. Two years, two or three years ago, I was looking at buying a fifth gen. You could buy like a nice 
well packaged like GTS for like ninety grand. Mm -hmm. Now. 150 160 if you're lucky well they're all rare too yeah all the fifth gen any color you have it in is like a rarity period no matter what spec it's it is the amount that were produced yeah and uh so i was like okay maybe i don't want a viper because i don't want to spend the money on a car that's 2017 old dodge technology mm -hmm. so like, okay what's the next thing that's not a lamborghini an audi r8 so i'm like starting Very similar, at, yeah, started, thing. started looking at audi I found one and went to the Audi dealership in Tampa, and I'm looking at it, and it's like, you get a rear-wheel drive new one for like 180, right? Was that that was new? No, no. I was like, but it's rear-wheel drive. Like the Audi all-wheel drive is the the Quattro is the one. Like, mm -hmm. I'm still a total noob to this. Like, I still have no idea about these things. But I'm like, I don't want a supercar that costs over 150 grand that doesn't have carbon ceramic brakes because they look cool. Like, and as well, who, I think the R8's like, like borderline what they would refer to as a supercar because obviously I'm sure it is. So it is the same as the Huracan underneath, really. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing, like if you look at a Lamborghini Huracan or, and your your uh, the Huracan Evo, and then you've got the R8, even though they might drive the same, have similar performance, that. Lamborghini's a different kettle of fish. It's like a Toyota SUV and a Lexus SUV. Same thing, but they're not the same thing. You yeah. know what I mean? So uh, that's and what from I said a to Bruce. Media I, said, point too, like. I said, Bruce, don't go spending 200 on a car that's not going to really scratch that itch. You know what I mean? You're going to get it. It's not really the curb presence you want or that you feel, you're going to feel like you spent 200 grand and it's going to. Yeah, it's not yeah. going to do what you want it to do, you know? So the new Audi R8s are, unless you get the Quattro, which is the packaged out. Like, you can get a new rear-wheel drive, regular, as the brakes sounds really immature and dumb, but it, for me, it's a selling point. Like, just regular old steel steel rotors and all that stuff, and they're like 180 grand. If you buy the new Quattro Perf Performante, whatever, whatever they call it, I don't no, know. Maybe I'm using the wrong terminology, but Quattro, which is an all-wheel drive. Someone will correct you, probably. And you want the plus. Carbons. Yeah, that sounds right. New, they're like 280 or something like that, and it's still an Audi. Well, I found a used Quattro 2020, and it was gonna be like 200 out the door. And I was like, obviously, I'm not that cash rich. So I like got approved with some money down. I was like, okay, this would get me my foot, my feet wet. I was like, well, I left, I'm gonna go home thinking about it. So, Paul, I think you came to the shop, or I was telling him about it because he has the now my car 21 Huracan Evo. He's like, well, if you're going to do that, I'll just say this, and I'll go buy me something different. I was like, hmm. I just said, if you're going to spend 200 on that, give me, you know, 270 Yeah, we're, all the cards on the table. I mean, you can't really hide too much when you're doing YouTube videos. So. I mean, It doesn't matter. I mean, people know what they cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like you're going to spend 200 on something that's not going to really scratch the itch, give a bit more, and we'll work something out on this one. So that's what we did, and I'd had, it, had a lot of fun with it. Um and, uh, you know, I don't mind ever let go of anything. I buy and sell stuff for a living. Everything's for sale. Uh, had a lot of fun with it and said to Bruce, you can do something with this. It's a really, obviously, cool color. Oh, super cool. Really yeah. unbelievably specked out interior, the big carbon ceramic brakes, the wheels, all brakes. everything's. <laughs> it is what you, like, that's the, it, you know, that is what it you want. It checked all the know? boxes, definitely. Don't damage yeah. one of those rotors. Yeah. Yeah, so. They're not Even barely. You can, apparently... You can't even well, nick, it's a chip nick start. Them, that's it. It's like yeah. it just is done. Yeah, I know on the ZR1 they're fifteen hundred bucks. Because you got carbon ceramic they're, on your wagon, don't no, you? No, they're steel. Oh really? I thought maybe it's just the big calipers. Yeah, they're just huge. I think the Lamborghini is something like five grand a corner. For, five or seven, for something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. On the um, on like the the brakes on the, what's it called the Urus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were like the, twenty the inches. So we'll, yeah, we'll lead huge. into that too. Yeah, we'll get all the way up to present time. Yeah, present time. We're getting there. It's, it gets better. I promise. So ended up with the car, and I'm just, like, obviously really happy about it. I mean, I, I fit, but if I was any wider, taller. Mm -hmm. not You're not a small me. guy, though, I'm yeah. not a small guy, but I've seen bigger guys climb out of a Lamborghini, and they, like, have no business being in one. Mm -hmm. like, you're the perfect size. I'm a good size. 
You're like Five, the size 10, of, the, one, of, the, of the guy that designed it. Well, yeah. even Garrett's Corvette, he always had a custom seat. Yeah, the carbon fiber drop seat. Yeah, he had yeah. a tillet seat to drop it to the ground, and nobody else could drive it because it's so, far so away. low. Because he has such a long torso. Well, it's like Shaq. Have you seen Shaq's cars? He sits in the back. <laughs> yeah. They take the front seat out. He basically sits in the back and drives it from the back seat. We had a guy in high school like that. He would he would pull up in his car, and he was a like one of the hall monitors, ex-NBA <laughs> player. He was really massive. And... His arm would be out the back window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it was a sedan, and his arm would be out the back window. And you're like, Howard, what are you doing? <laughs> He's a big dude. He's driving That's that thing. Funny. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. So you guys are doing so, diving into trying to from, make profit off of a Huracan. Yeah. So I'm like, it's a business. Wanting expense. to, yeah, definitely. So I'm wanting to figure out how to make wake up. He's like, okay, we're going to go hop in the supercar or whatever, maybe, or any car and make have. Fun video, like anything. My videos are fun. Duty, right? Anything, like literally anything. I don't have to turn wrenches on mm. to an extent. I mean, I'll do an oil change in Lamborghini oh, one that's day. That's a good story too. But um, so, so that's where this all like inspired and from. And I was thinking one day, I'm like, thinking of a second channel name is like impossible. A brand, and so I came up with like Wilson Speed. My buddy Spencer actually came up with it. I was like, hmm, Wilson Speed on GoDaddy, WilsonSpeed.com available. Like, done deal. Mm-hmm. So now I have Wilson Speed Co. on YouTube because that's the only Gmail domain that was available. <laughs> so starting the second channel, Wilson Speed Co. We've posted, I've posted one video. i got another one to edit. And um, trying to do, planning to do cars, cars and coffee, all this other cool stuff. The car is a lot of fun. I've learned my lesson not to mess. Don't, might do exhaust or something simple, but... No twin turbos, none of that for me. Every time I've like modified a gas car, it's went the TRX or whatever. So yeah. sal. I had a TRX, put twin turbos on it, slung yeah, but that a rod. Was a Dodge. This is made I by know. Germans. One day, but anyway. <laughs> so leaving her factory for now, gonna have some fun. Paul's gonna get a cool car, another car soon. We looked at it. So we went tonight. Uh, the whole talk about this uh, podcast yeah. talk. I've been yeah, trying to get more. down here to Cooper for a few. You've a been while. well requested. Yeah. Yeah, a while. So now. while you guys are down here, which I was like, perfect. <laughs> well, Sarasota's obviously now it's all the wealth, you know. Yeah. So there's Lamborghini dealers, all the all the Ferrari and Lamborghini stuff. So there was a Mercedes SLS Gullwing, that uh, pretty grandpa rare car. car. They don't make them anymore. <laughs> My wife calls it a grandpa car. It was it's a super long nice and hood. Clean. Gullwing doors, yeah, and they are really cool. Uh, they don't make them anymore. I think they might, for as far as supercars go, it might have a like a might climb a bit in value. Already has from what they were new, and it was a uh, found a nice example of it uh, of one of those. We <laughs> came down. It's like ten minutes from here. <laughs> found a nice example of one. We went and looked at it, and. Door, it was open. It was at the Mercedes dealership. We pulled up. It was unlocked in, in the back the, lot. We pulled up in the Lamborghini, so then you get a little bit of, like, someone's willing to help you at Respect, least, you know. Yeah. So she said, lady said, yeah. I said, I'm here to see a SLS. It's here getting new tires on it. Um, it's not here for sale. She said, and I'd talked to the owner, obviously, and he said, yeah, go check it out. And we got a ride way back to the back lot. <laughs> like a half a mile on the golf cart. Looked at all kinds of G-Wagons or whatever on the way. Got back there. It's sitting. It is immaculate. It is like matte, matte gray. 9,000 miles or And something. you don't, yeah, 8,000 miles, matte gray, which the colors, you always see them, they're always uh, gloss black usually or white or whatever. This is matte, and it's got the going doors. It was open. <laughs> way in the back of, of uh, it was unlocked. Opened it up. It's got a. It's like it was like brand new. So then, talked to you know, talked about that. Looked at it. Really nice lady. Went she, right across the street after that to Lamborghini. They were really cool. Everyone there was like you, ten you people. You walk in into there. a car dealership, right? They're like, you're, they're doing you a favor. Well, just to help. Not you anymore. Move. That was in you know yeah. twenty twenty. Yeah. When they were selling so many cars. But even then, like local. Well, maybe it's me because now they're like, like please the come buy a stuff. car. But they were like. Really chill, weren't trying to sell anything. Like, they were just really nice, humble people. It probably helps if we pulled up in something they sell. Yeah. But I was like, okay, well, Paul's story here. I'm like, test drive. First time I'm driving this car, the Huracan, for the first time. He's like, you want to drive it before you like decide on this. So I'm driving it. Service do light pops up. 
He's like, oh. That's funny. Looks, That's funny. Little does he tell me after I've bought it. He's like, service light's been coming it's on been for coming three months. It's been coming for three months. <laughs> service, it's not a service light. It's not a warning or it's anything. Just it's just oil change due. It's yeah. due. Time, you know, time so, of change. We, I'm like, let's go to the Lamborghini life. dealership. I'll get an oil filter. I'm, I'm going like, to change the oil myself. Make a video out of changing the oil on a Lamborghini. We'll Someone might want to watch something that. Something for the Wilson Speed Channel. And um, side note, it's it's so easy to film for a new channel when you already have a big channel. So I've noticed, like, I've, obviously I noticed that, but it's I've it's presented to new viewers so much easier mm -hmm. and better. But anyway, so we go there. I'm like, buy an oil filter. It says Volkswagen on the box. This oil filter, hello to supercar life or whatever. Um, oil filter and like eight crush washers because it's to dry sump engine, two hundred and fourteen dollars. Yeah, for a filter that says Volkswagen yeah, it's on the, the same box. One a Passat uses. Something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nothing so, fancy at all. Buy the filter, and we're talking to like the lead tech there. Super chill. We're like walk in the back, they've got invite us into the shop. Yeah, where they've got oh, like. It's only, like a, it's only like an eight-bay shop. Maybe not even. Yeah, it was about that. Yeah. And there was a Rolls-Royce Conan, 500, 600,000. That literally was the, it was like a yacht, you know, it looked like yeah. a mega yacht inside. Insane, how nice. He's shown us, you know, there's a Ventador now, you know, expensive $900,000 Ventadors and stuff. And um, he said, come look at the computer, we'll see. Because Bruce is asking can you show us, like, is there any what, el left what in else? Because it's a 2021. What yeah. else is it needing doing? And they have a three year yeah. warranty. And I said, yeah, I think it's like about now. Well, we go, of course, it was like Inspiring. right when I sold it to Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and he shows us all what's been done on it. And that he said, well, that's weird. He said, it doesn't say, it says service, main service one, main service two, but it doesn't say like the, the, Maintenance package, what they normally come with new, is expired. Come with three yet. services when you realize. buy a new one. I had no idea, and so they'd look into it some more. Bruce is asking a couple of questions. Obviously, they're showing us uh, Perfamonte uh, Uruses. Nope. We look all around, and then he's like, "Yeah, come back in." We'll Uruses with to. the big brakes on them too. It's mm -hmm. Crazy how big they are. So we get in there to a service lady. She looks it up. It's a four thousand dollar service that it needs. <laughs> Bruce already bought Hello. a two hundred dollar, what he thought was a two hundred dollar yeah. uh, oil this video filter. Video better be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> welcome to welcome to the welcome to my world, basically. And then she's like, "Yeah, but it says here you're still good up until February sixteenth or whatever." Something yeah. like that, like in a month. And the Bruce, free service and is like, gone. We'll come pick it up. I'm like, oh, so they're gonna come pick it up with white gloves on, yeah. push it in the trailer, bring it down, do the service. $4,000 service for free. free. I had oh. no idea. I'd have had it in already. Yeah, that's not a bad deal. Shoot, Cheap Paul here me. hasn't even called never, the dealership to check on a, a service price. I've never pulled the dips. I didn't know where the dipstick was. Oh, I, you know, I'm mechanically inclined, but that thing doesn't leak oil. It's yeah. nice, you know, and it's like... So him trying to be cheap almost cost you money. A lot of new cars aren't even come with <laughs> dipsticks anymore. Yeah, they just the drain Mercedes plugs. Really? Stuff. Yeah. Just drain plugs and an oil sensor. Yeah. Right. Oil level sensor. Interesting. That no win no window or nothing? Nothing. You oh, just no. the computer tells you when it's low. I don't so, like that. No, yeah. that's weird. I don't trust that at all. So the four thousand dollar service is engine oil, they check whatever and transmission service. Yeah. Because it's got a wet clutch and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. They can that fluid's probably not cheap either. But no, the, the right fluid's side, expensive. An oil change is only nine hundred bucks, and that includes pickup and delivery. Only, I mean, hey, only it's not bad. Take it to the <laughs> take it to the five minute quick loop or something. You know, and right? see what they'll do. Oh, they'll they'll have it six ways to Sunday. Messed yeah, up. Yeah, I can connect you with a guy that travels around and works on those things. <laughs> he's he, he's worked for some pretty big twin turbo shops, and now he's like yeah, a really? traveling mechanic. Well, mechanic it's scheduled to get those, picked up yeah. on the twenty second of this month. Oh, let's go. And they'll have it for a couple of days and get it serviced. So. But, like, Which, if you were doing, like, performance oh, mods yeah. of any kind, like intake, exhaust, tune. Lamborghini's really, this is why I wanted Lamborghini. Obviously, that presence, that look, it's out there. I'm young, you know, I want I want to have something cool. But also, they're not stuck up. Like, they'll, they, the guy was telling me today, Super, I mean, like, take your way laid back take your Huracan there. They'll program it to where the valves are open wider, and they'll do all this. They can the STO. take... Yeah, or, you know, they'll do different stuff with all of them. He's like, and it's still under warranty. It's still that. You know, mm -hmm. Ferrari is so uptight about everything, as everyone knows. They'll... They're pretty unreliable, so they can't really do some, Yeah, can't start messing with stuff like that. Once it's just Germans crazy. started building 
Lamborghinis, they became a lot better. Mm. The Huracan's way more reliable, I think, than yes. the Aventador, too. 100%. Yeah. The Aventadors, you can't give any power to them because of the single clutch. So they yeah. kind of suck because of that. But then anything pre Huracan is usually pretty shit. Like the E Gears and like the Galados yeah, and Gallardos. like the Murcielagos. Yeah. Like they're a lot more unreliable and hard Now that thing, on. this is sweet. Yeah, I've never I love it. It's so cool. Yeah, they're good. I mean, the, the new wear off, I'm sure, but it, like, I was kind of upset that I couldn't get to. I mean, I can change the oil, obviously, because I wanted to like make a video and learn how to do it. Because mm -hmm. I've been learning a lot. I'm already pretty well knowledgeable with mechanical anything, but the Scania has been a huge learning curve. And now the Fer you know, Ferrari. The Lamborghini is going to be another big learning curve. Hopefully, I don't have to work on it too much. I mean, it sounds like you're just going to be a cars and coffee guy. I mean, There's one tomorrow. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to go to that. We're going to it. Yeah, we're going to. Literally right here. Got to meet my. <laughs> oh, though, we're going the Enclave. Oh, yeah, that too. Is in That's Tampa tomorrow. It's, it's going to be, be the biggest one. Huge. Like, they're going to do it on the track. This other guy was. Well, they're the doing one at UTC tomorrow. Yeah, I've seen well. that one too. Wow. But that's always one of the biggest ones. Yeah. That's, uh, that sucks that they doubled. Yeah. Double booked. Yeah. With each other. A lot of nice cars around here too, though. Especially all the way mm -hmm. down to Naples is all. Now, stay in my area. Crazy. I'll be like the high hitter. You are. I'll be Zephyr hitting, Hills hitting only, only Lambo we'll guy. Zephyr Hills or Dade City, Florida cars and coffee. The Enclave is a cool track, though. That's a cool spot they just put there. Have you been there before? Yeah, I went there for the Pirelli driving experience, and I got to drive on the track. Really? With this, it was like a new G80 M3 or M, yeah. What was that? How'd you get in with that deal? They reached out to me to come really? and go and get to experience it a little bit, and they had some, like, uh, McLarens out there that you got to ride along in. They had, like, a GT3 RS. No like, driving, though? I drove the... I drove the BMW. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything else was you ride along. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't do any of that because I was like, yeah. I don't, I don't need to just be a passenger. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, it's all pulse I, I know it way here sounds yeah. like, or, I know it sounds like pompous, but like, it's, it's I have no, you, yeah, I didn't really need. When to. you're a driver, it's like I don't really want to ride with someone else. Yeah, I was like, it's cool. Like, they're the instructors are probably good and stuff, but like, it's, it's not like I'm going on the Nurburgring for the first time mm -hmm. in my life. Like, I'm just gonna. It's a pretty docile track too, isn't it? It's not anything yeah, crazy. It's not that fast. And the so it was like an open track day too. Like people could pay to go there. And this guy shows up with this super crisp um, 4GT yellow. Oh, stripes. the new one or the older one? Older one. Oh, nice. Just put a big blower on it. I modified it all. Yeah. yeah. And like he's out there doing a couple laps, like getting it warmed up. All of a sudden you hear him kind of get on like a little straightaway and you just hear backs it into the wall. Oh, it's oh, coming no. stuck. Spins, nose dives it into the wall. And like just wrecked. Like I mean, it it's probably fixable, but like those clamshells and stuff, like the whole back is like one clamshell. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was That's bad. terrible. Big sad. Big sad. <laughs> Big sad to watch that happen. And it's not like those aren't like track cars like that. Like no, it's not something you no. take around like a short course racetrack. Like that's something that's like high speed or like cruising, like they're not yeah. really like it's not like the. They're not a handling car. They're not a GT or a cup car. Not right? really, and some people may disagree with me on that, but like it's, you know, for the price, if you could have that, you could probably have like a GT3 RS Mustang that you can also go use and yeah, yeah, be a little happy or the GT350. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. go beat GT3 on that. GT3 RS Mustang. Yeah, no, the GT350. <laughs> hey, yeah. Close enough, you know, <laughs> GT3. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, you could probably have that and beat on that all day. But, yeah, I don't know. Well, well, that brings us to current times. Obviously, we went and, and looked at some cars, and hopefully now that the COVID price has settled, there's not mm -hmm. over MSRP yeah. stuff as much. Lamborghini's still pretty sold out for a few years, you know, allocations and stuff. Yeah. But they were really cool. He said, no, people do drop out. Just, you know, so we'll see. Maybe a, another used one or something. The gull wings are cool because they have explosives on board. <sighs> that's what? something. That's something that I would put yeah. in the in the gara uh, garage. What is that? What do you mean? And keep, you know. Because the doors open up, mm -hmm. so the hinges are explosive hinges. Because if you're upside down, the doors can't open, so oh. they can blow the doors off. Oh, that's cool. On the gull wings, yeah, because they need like a way to get the doors that's off. A good, I'm good video. Pretty sure, that's how it works. It'd be a good video. Hold on, right? That blow the doors off. This is a off. video title right here, dude. This is a <laughs> explosive long doors. podcast. We've been on here a minute, haven't we? Yeah, it's like two hours. <laughs> Let's blow the doors off yeah. this thing. Right. I've been putting titles in here. 
I'm pretty sure they do. I, I could be wrong, of course, hey, but because you know, I don't, I'm not exactly. A I just right, now Paul's got to buy this SLS. But it makes sense because if it's on its roof, how are you going to open the doors to yeah. get out? So they have like a little bit of Scania insight. They have. I thought I'm like hey, this thing's got a sunroof in it. Yeah. No, it's an escape hatch. In case you fall through that. Every ice. European semi truck, by law, has to have an escape hatch out the top. So if you're on the side or whatever, you can crawl at the top. Huh. I would imagine, like, ice is nice, you know, if you kind of... Who knows? You know, if you crash down into some ice and the doors are... Just, you're, you're sinking in the lake, you can crawl. <laughs> exactly. Top. You're going over the skyway and you look down at your phone. Yeah. And, <laughs> and suddenly you got, like, a hundred-foot drop. <laughs> like you said with them bridges in Louisiana or whatever, they're just forever long bridges mm-hmm. yep. on I-10. Yeah, Crazy. not a fun spot. Well, we'll wrap it up there, guys. I'm sure you'll be back on... Definitely. Yeah. All that's... kinds of endeavors and travels come... My leg is cramping. (laughs) (laughs) We've hardly even scratched the surface, but that'll do it, guys. Uh, Well, I guess I usually, I always end off with how can they follow you guys? How can people find you? But don't find Bruce, dude. (laughs) (laughs) I've known Bruce long enough, guys. Don't even look for him. It's just the hate. I love the hate. (laughs) Yeah. You can find Paul on YouTube. Just type in Paul Coates, C O A. T E S. I don't want T-O-A. to be found. T-E-S. I'm I, tagging along, and I'm just. Uh, We're gonna get some of these old motor. Giving a little bit of up. getting getting a little bit of uh, insight or giving insight. Bruce is the famous Jameis, and uh, I'm just hanging out. I don't get into the. Are you his handler? Media. Like legally, like you have to keep an eye he on might him. Be my financial <laughs> handler. I, Somebody just has to follow him around to make financial sure. Financial handler, financial advisor, financial. It, it, it falls on deaf ears, though. It goes yeah. one ear and out the other, in one ear and out the other. I've always felt Bruce. Bruce needed that. <laughs> so to kind of keep an eye on him. He needs yeah. multiple different uh, handlers for handlers. different situations. Yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been fun. I definitely need to get this. Is Really fun. <laughs> yeah, dude, good time. I have to this get is my food. first podcast, too, by the way. Oh, perfect. I always yeah. like having people that have never been on one. Pop my cherry. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Soon, soon to be podcaster number 7,435,000. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, guys. That was hey, a good time. I'll see you next time. Yeah.